You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network. This is Rod Mahood, your in-game voice of the Niagara Ice Dogs, and you're listening to the Dog Pound Podcast on the Armchair GM Sports Network, your podcast source for all game analysis, team interviews, and up-to-date news regarding the Niagara Ice Dogs. Perlini! Overtime! Ice Dogs win! Hosing! To McGill Thomas. Thomas has the angle coming. Welcome in to our special edition Dog Pound podcast live from the Ice Dogs 2024 OHL Priority Selection Draft. Brennan Caputo and Cam Halbert are with you to break down the Ice Dogs weekend. We're going to be recording today and tomorrow, rounds 1 to 3 tonight, rounds 4 through 15 the rest of the weekend. Thank you to everybody today tuning in. On our YouTube Live, we appreciate you tuning in to the live stream tonight. Make sure to give us a follow at Dog Pound Podcast. Make sure to hit hit like and hit subscribe if you enjoy the video versions of our podcast and the live stream that we're going to bring to you through this extended coverage of our Dog Pound Podcast OHL Draft live stream. So with that said, Cam, uh, your first time doing this as far as uh, joining us on the live stream coverage. So Sure, you're looking forward to it. We're about four minutes away from the draft beginning with the second pick. I believe they still have to announce Ethan Belchez as first overall to the Windsor Spitfires. He was picked yesterday, but uh, should be an exciting time, and the Ice Dogs will pick at number four. Absolutely. Excited to be here in the facility, and great to be back in the arena uh, as well. But, uh, yeah, the the, uh, draft room right beside us as we anxiously await to see who Niagara selects at number four. Absolutely. So, guys, the Dog Pound Podcast is proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods. Our pets are undeniably part of the family in all four of their great Niagara region locations. Make sure to give them some love on Seniors Day. 15% off uh, your entire purchase the last Tuesday of every month, uh, if you guys are into that sort of thing. And thank you to our great sponsors who, without them, we wouldn't be able to bring you this live coverage and the uh, coverage that we've done all season long for the Niagara Ice Dogs. So we're going to be saying thanks to them throughout the six hours of coverage that we're going to bring you the next couple of days and kind of a wrap up on our uh, Dog Pound podcast season. We're going to have a couple other episodes uh, going forward here, but for the most part, this is going to be our last big episode and until going into next season. But Cam, just going over before we get to the draft stuff, what was kind of your biggest takeaway from this year we talked about it in our uh, end of end of season episode but they got some young pieces here we're going to go over the rosters we've got some historical stuff to go over a lot of stuff to bring you guys as well but um, you know we talk about some of those specific games and specific players but uh, what stands out to you so far about your first year covering the Niagara Ice Dogs I just think like the we talked about this a number of times but I think the hope uh, I I, as a as a fan of season ticket holder the prior prior couple of years obviously uh, a tough go for the Ice Dogs franchise and I think that even as a whole throughout the rest of the league, maybe not respected or seen in the same light as it once used to be, this was a franchise that had some of the best names in the NHL play for them. And I think that we're well on our way to get back into that, you know, kind of upper echelon of the OHL, which is what Niagara was for so long. But, you know, we went through a couple of bad years with uh, with COVID and some off-ice issues. Uh, but now everything last year felt like the first issue or first year of progress where uh, we were finally working towards the future and we saw uh, potentially one of the best seasons we might ever see as an, uh, as an Ice Dog fan um, in, in Ryan Rubrick. We saw um, you know, a fantastic follow-up sophomore season from Kevin He in his draft year. Uh, excited to see where he goes this summer. And uh, much like I mentioned um, throughout the season, I think that it's just such a massive thing to have Kevin – uh, who was a part of last year's team, which was just you know a really tough go. I think that uh, it was important for him to you know to get drafted because I think that it brings legitimacy back to the franchise and and really uh, really kind of sets us sets us up for the future. So um, talk about the you know the new captain and Gavin Bryant who filled in admirably and is is just a, such a great leader. 
Um, but uh, just a, a really fun year. I, I the thing I have to I will I will say and the best part about this year was just the competitiveness of the players. Um, a lot of these games, while the standings might not reflect it, there were so many one goal games early on or games where they were winning or or tied in the third period. Um, and then some memorable wins that probably will be one of the more some of the more memorable wins throughout the last few years of that win against Kitchener, for example, when they were undermanned. Um, so just a, a great job all the way around. And like I said, this is the first year that felt like real progress. And we look at what's available for the Niagara Ice Dogs. We talk about Ethan Belchez from the Oakville Rangers going first to the Windsor Spitfires. And there's been a couple of players that have chosen to go the BCHL route or other routes, which Seems has been like kind of interesting. It's going to be a big topic of conversation, I think, among the leagues over the next little while for sure. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen guys like Nyman, Fitzgerald, and even uh, if Valentini is, is projected as well. We'll see kind of where that goes. But um, some top players or projected top five, top ten players that have chosen to go other routes that really might make this uh, – this draft a real crapshoot. Usually you already know who the top four or five consensus is going to be. But with all this, I guess, jockeying with these players committing to other leagues, it brings up a lot more questions as far as what might actually happen. And it could actually see a little bit of an unknown that is quite not as common in the OHL as we might see. Well, it doesn't feel like the last two years where – uh, last year it was re- it's really seemed like it was between Schaefer and Rubrik in one and two, and Schaefer's going to have a great career and a projected first round pick in in the NHL this upcoming season, uh, following year. Um, but I don't think any Ice Dog fan is going to complain about who we got at number two. Um, and even in the prior year with Misa, uh, for example, um, there was a clear cut one or two. This year it just seems like it is kind of wide open. Um, and especially with the players that are are not committing and or they are committing and, and not going to be playing in the in the OHL, um, we have a, a mock draft that was put together by by a, a lot of different scouts in the industry. And yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned Valentini, mm-hmm. right? That was they had him ranked number two. Um, so a couple of guys in the top ten that uh, would definitely have made an impact in the OHL. They chose to go another route. Yeah, and we'll have to see Ryan Robrick. Obviously, the Ice Dogs, as you mentioned, hit on him last year, coming second overall. I understand why Matt Schaefer went first, the defenseman. But Ryan Robrick broke every single Ice Dogs rookie record and 16-year-old record that the franchise had. Just an incredible first season for Ryan Robrick. And we talk about the commitment and guys wanting to come to Niagara. You know, I think Ryan Robrick's a guy that can really turn a franchise around and and the team doesn't get built by one player but having a guy like him commit coming in having such a great rookie season you'd hope that other players would want to follow suit and come play with guys like Ryan Rover play with Kevin He and those types of players to really rebuild that franchise that you mentioned that has been so well known and well respected throughout the years in the Ontario Hockey League that has developed some great NHL players that some of them I've been able to talk to this year covering some games for Buffalo and doing some alumni pieces on them, and they all said they were all proud to play in Niagara. They all had so much fun playing here. So you think that the new crop of guys would hopefully want to get into that same, I guess, mindset of Niagara being a destination that players want to come to. I think that the important thing is for them to be a a playoff team and then remain one for for a long time and, 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 you know, start producing some of those NHL-drafted players. I think that it's extremely important um, because... You know, unfortunately, we the last time that we picked fourth overall, it didn't really go as planned. Um, obviously, with Sam Dickinson and, um, uh, not committing to the Ice Dogs, so uh, what you want to get to is a point where the franchise is a destination where players are excited to come to. I mean, for anyone that hasn't come and and seen a game in Niagara, I mean, we averaged you know inside the uh, top seven for attendance this year, last year, which is arguably the worst season that we've ever had. We were fourth. You know, so it, it, we have a great arena um, and, and a great staff, and, and it's just especially with, with head coach um, Ben Boudreau as well now. Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of positives around this team coming up. But, yeah, when you talked about some of the alumni, I mean, if you were to do a, uh, a alumni lineup, you know, obviously we don't have the, the, the history of some of the older franchises, but, I mean, a starting six, I mean, Alex Petrangelo and Dougie Hamilton, there's not going to be many D <laughs> pairs in the, that are from OHL alumni that are going to be much better than that. You've got Vince Dunn, who was incredible for Seattle. Um, you know, Verhage, who is just an absolute force in the NHL. Ryan Strom, for example. And then Akil Thomas just scored his first goal uh, in the NHL. And um, I think once we get back there, I think 
the biggest thing of last year in terms of how our prospects went um, was that uh, we didn't even realize until about halfway through the year as we were t- we just never uh, never really clicked that Rubrik's not a, it's not even his draft year this year. Like we have him for another year as well um, before his draft year. And if you you know different publications that you want to take serious in terms of where you, projections are and whatnot. I looked at the elite prospects the other day, and he's a top five pick in the NHL. Projected. Now, obviously, things can change, and but it just goes to show how much attention could be on the Ice Dogs in this upcoming year, but all especially the following one. Yeah, you get absolutely. a Canadian rated that high in the NHL uh, entry draft, um, you're going to get a lot of following around there, and that's going to be big for players that are looking to potentially continue their career as a pro because whether you get drafted or not, there's still tryouts, like there's still there's still invitees, camp invitees, and the more NHL prospects you have, the more scouts that you're going to see in your building. So um, just a, a huge thing to, to keep in mind. But uh, we are getting, uh, we will be following along with the uh, with the draft live, and we'll uh, break down the the picks for you as uh, as they happen. Uh, we already know number one, obviously Windsor, uh, winning the draft lottery. They uh, selected Ethan Belchets from the Oakville Rangers, so that one they are officially announcing it uh, right now, very shortly. So we'll wait and see who Sarnia selects at number two. Yeah, I think they're just going over, I guess, uh, on on the television side of things because they do have uh, the top four picks at uh, the OHL headquarters there uh, for the TV broadcast. If you guys are looking for that, uh, that's on OHL uh, Live. And we're going to be breaking down the Ice Dogs picks here for today. And I believe uh, Sarnia is on the clock now. So, Oh, I love that. See where that we see well what, done, sir. Hey, we're getting to the NFL draft yeah. as well. It's Look draft time for the OHL and the, uh, the NFL draft. But when you talk about a guy like Ryan Robrick, I mean, when you looked at, at what he was able to do last year, as that rookie, and he came in at second overall, and then the Ice Dogs were able to take Ethan Zada at fifth overall, and then their second round pick, and Artem Frolov came in and played a significant role. Uh, Ivan Galianov came in as a fourth round pick, so they had four guys from the 2023 OHL draft make an immediate impact right away for the Ice Dogs, and if you guys are wondering, the Ice Dogs will pick fourth overall tonight, th- uh, 30th overall with their second round pick. They don't have their their own second. It is Guelph second, so it's 30th overall. And then they'll also have two-thirds with the 44th and 56th overall selection. So, Cam, based off of what you saw with last year's draft class, they, this draft class has a lot to live up to. Well, last draft uh, really set the franchise in motion. You know, uh, again, getting four roster players that have had an, they made an impact in the OHL, like they actually belonged, um, is absolutely massive. When you look through um, other teams that are successful, like London, they, they hit on a lot of their players regular. That's how they remain so competitive. So... Um, this early on in a rebuild, obviously, Robrick really sets things straight. I mean, he almost had a 30-goal season uh, as a 16-year-old. and um, But, yeah, Zada, Frolov, Galianov all made big impacts on the team and will only improve. So when you get four roster players in a draft, that just really accelerates things. If they can do that again with two rosters roster players even three would be it would be huge um i think that's a, you know a, a lot of stretch you want to get to the point where you can slowly progress since you don't have to rush them anything like that but um i think last year was such a massive bump to the franchise and, and a credit to the scouting department for niagara absolutely and talking about the nhl draft real quick as we're still waiting for the picks to come in the ice dogs will have kevin he most likely drafted in this year's NHL draft, and that'll be the first player they've had since Phil Tomasino in 2019, which is going to be a big for the franchise as well, just to have another player drafted from the team, not afterward like a Gushkin after yes. he was already picked, uh, or a Sobolev that they acquired. So having somebody developed and drafted to the NHL as Kevin He hopefully will be this year, kind of breaking through that glass ceiling. He was there. invited to the Initial combine. Yep. Well, that was uh, we didn't we uh, we had him on at the last game of the season, second last it's the last home game of the season. Yep. And um, we found out afterwards that yeah he did get the invite. So obviously uh, a good look there to have Kevin uh, get invited. Um, I think there was a uh, the uh, coach voting right uh, the coach voting and uh, he was rated third best skater mm-hmm. um, in the league and that just you know you think about the players that are in the league. Um, that that just goes to show how how impressive he's been, and it's definitely something to watch when you get to see uh, Kevin not just shoot the puck, but um, how he creates time and space for himself. 
Absolutely. And if you guys are following along in the chat, make sure to, to comment with us there. We'll, I'll be trying to keep up with the live chat as much as possible tonight uh, as we go through here. And if you guys have any questions, and we will, I forgot to mention, we will have some guests on throughout the, the two-day coverage, some players, some management, and as well some other special guests that will join us uh, throughout the two days worth of coverage that we're going to bring you here on the Dog Pound podcast. So, and we're still waiting for the picks. I, I believe they're still going on TV here uh, with the, I guess, introductions here and, and Ethan Belchez, but uh, I believe yeah, it they're does still, look like they're yeah, yeah it looks they're like still they're, announcing that. they're still going on. We talk so. about him for a second. I'll uh, I'll play the epic music on low until they pick here. The fact that we've got a 16 year old, six foot five, 230 pounds, is going to be a problem for the OHL. <laughs> I mean, like that is absolutely crazy. Um, so congrats to Windsor, who's already. You know, they got to they a little bit of a jump start on their rebuild after, uh, you know, going all in <laughs> with one of the better teams. And obviously, it didn't work out in the playoffs. So going up against, I believe, getting swept by Kitchener. Um, that was the Shane Wright, uh, the Shane Wright Spitfires. Um, but they've got two projected first round picks in uh, Green, Tree, Green Tree and uh, Christoforo. Christoforo. Um, so now they get, you know, a big prospect uh, in Belchez and uh, we'll see you, but uh, probably brighter days ahead than what they experienced last season. Yeah, we, we'll have to wait and see, but again, like you mentioned, a 6'5", 16-year-old, that's, uh, like, that's I definitely don't have those, like, those types of genes. No, I mean, just, like the, the fact that he's already 6'5", I mean, you know, it's just, you know, we've got a guy potentially be 6'8", and <laughs> playing, and playing in the OHL, I mean, the size alone is, is going to get you looks. Uh, for sure, no matter what. So he was the consensus. Again, we'll uh, we've got a mock draft from from various scouts uh, covering the the Ontario Hockey League, and he was the consensus number one, uh, including the um, aforementioned uh, players that were not that did that committed uh, to the uh, BCHL. Right. So, Cam, we're gonna put your thinking cap on here for a second. I don't mean to put you on the spot, and you know we we are uh, right next to the draft room here, but. Uh, who would be the guy that you're looking at here? Brady Wasslin is the guy that's kind of been uh, linked to Niagara a little bit here, and Zach Nyman would have been uh, a, a solid pick if he wouldn't have went to the BCHL route. But uh, it looks like it's going to be a forward regardless, and whoever that forward is, I'm going to be happy with because uh, they could definitely add another uh, exciting young forward to this group. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, we're still at a stage where we aren't drafting for position. I think that uh, we need best best available as it was officially announced uh Ethan Belchez is now a Windsor Spitfire so we're going to get into Sarnia's pick very shortly um I think that uh, I've, re I've reached out to uh, my good friend uh, Stephen Ellis who works at Daily Faceoff and is one of the best people in the industry covering uh, covering prospects uh, all over the world um, he had a chance to cover the, the players being drafted today and um his his number four pick for Niagara um, just kind of projection wise was uh, was Brady Smith uh, just a quick note on him. He said he had incredible. He was incredible with the, New York, with the North York Rangers. Can score. Good setup guy. Loves the puck on a stick. I think that if you can get another dynamic forward that can play on the second line, um, where Rubric and Kevin can kind of do their thing next year, and you have a second line that can consistently score and get pucks on net, like that's just a massive advantage. It's something that we, you know, we didn't really have this year because once uh, once Rubric and, and Kevin kind of got together, they just kind of stuck together. For Season, as they should have. Yeah, and Sarnia and Peterborough obviously jumped over Niagara in the lottery. They went from one to four, and it is what it is. But with this year, there seems to be, you know, a kind of a whole crop of guys that are available. It's not like a, a number one. I mean, Belchez went number one, but you could make a case for a couple of guys that, uh, you know, it's not maybe that top end guy. It's going to be four or five different players that really could be impact guys from the start. Yeah, it wasn't like we missed out on like the, the, uh, the Misa year. Um, obviously, where there is a clear-cut number one, um, where it's kind of a big gut punch. I, I think, obviously, any time that you lose when you have the worst record and you've got a 40% chance, and somehow you fall to the worst of all of them, uh, is, is obviously just crazy. But that's just, you know, how it's been throughout the last few years for Niagara. And um, But this, is, this would be the year to have that happen. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work through it. And, um, I think that you... Kind of nailed it on your on the head there, where it's just um, uh, a lot of options. Here. So we'll see uh, who gets uh, who gets taken here. As, uh, Sarni is on the clock. Yep. So I guess they're milking it for TV. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> there we go. 
So thank you again for hanging out in the live stream. Uh, appreciate everyone hanging out there. We've got, it uh, looks like about 150 people already before we've made our first pick. So uh, thank you again for everyone uh, coming to hang out to our to our OHL Draft live stream. And if everybody, if there are people in here that have been followers of us all year long, Cam and I want to say a big thank you to everybody oh, tuning in to our game recaps after every single Ice Dogs home game, as well as our monthly wrap-up shows, our shows in between. Uh, we really appreciate the support, and we look forward, as the team builds on here, uh, to continue to bring you more great coverage. Uh, and as uh, the great PA announcer, Rod Mahood, would say, be loud and be proud for your Niagara Ice Dogs. And that's uh, that's what we're all about as we continue to uh, watch this team uh, build up the standings here and, and getting another solid player here added to the mix. So we're still waiting here for the pick from the Sarnia Sting. I believe they are still on the clock. Uh, we don't have the CHL TV uh, stream up for us right now. It's um, waiting on their socials as well. Just yeah. Ethan uh, Belchess. I really think they're milking this TV broadcast. And last year, <laughs> last year there was quite a bit uh, for for. Uh, Matt Shaver, and obviously the the first overall pick gets selected the, the night before. Yeah, and whoever Niagara does take, we will have them on the show tomorrow. They will be here uh, live at the arena tomorrow. Uh, they will not be here tonight, obviously, being at the uh, OHL headquarters there with the top four picks. So uh, whoever Niagara does take at four, uh, they will join us tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow again, uh, 9 a.m. We'll be joining you guys here. Uh, for rounds four through 15. We'll see how far we can get. It's going to be a long couple of days here, but uh, bringing you all the coverage that we can as possible. Who do you think goes second to Sarnia? Well, I would have said Valentini, but with that uh, whole USHL uh, commitment, and again, that I don't even think if that's been 100% confirmed, or if it was, I didn't see anything saying that he had already been a lock committed. Usually you see those graphics that are posted by the teams themselves, but I did see uh, that Nyman and... Um, Malhotra both uh, chose the uh, BCHL route as well, so we're still waiting here for the Sarnia Sting to make their pick. This might this might uh, break a record for the longest draft with the NFL draft because they they love to take the, the full what is it ten minutes for the first round. The first oh, first round the, is wild. There's no the trade and there's no trade, so um, <laughs> it's not like we're being held up because. Batman's going to the floor and uh, we've got the trade to announce. So. Oh, the, and the Ice Dogs. If somebody. If you don't know, they aren't allowed to make trades. Yes. The trade deadline was yesterday to make trades. That's why you saw Niagara uh, make a little late uh, pick swap there, picking up a 13th round pick two years from now for a 14th in this year's draft. So I better uh, cross off one of those 14s. I believe it's their own 14th round pick um, that is going this year. So the Ice Dogs will select four times tonight, fourth overall, 30th, 44th, and 56th. So we're still waiting here. Here we As go. That's the Sarnia Sting. The pick is in. Alessandro Diorio from the Vaughn Kings. Okay. Center, five foot eleven, 165 pounds to the Sarnia Sting, second overall. All right. So not like not a consensus. But again, we talked about this that it, it was, you know, kind of all the way, uh, you know, a wide open once or a wide open draft. Um, and uh, again, I'm just going to read the verb from that we've got from our mock draft that uh, that was put together by a number of um, OHL scouts. Uh, this one was uh, put together by Sean Ellison uh, in regards to Alessandro Daorio. Or Daorio. Um, he was uh, ranked 16th. So again, maybe uh, you know, again, the player or teams just kind of finding their guy. Um, here's what he had to say: I'd wager he's long gone by this point. But if he were to slide, I think North Bay. This was a mock draft that they thought that North Bay might get him. We'll be happy to select Alessandro Delorio. Uh, he really came onto the scene with this impressive tournament at the Youth Olympic Games where he put up six goals, one assist in four games played. One of the leaders on the powerhouse Von Kings team. He was a force on the ice and was one of the most dominant players in U16 hockey this year. He's a big, strong, two-way centerman that plays with pace, smarts, and a high level of competitiveness. Alessandro is at his best in possession where his explosiveness can with his quick release, make him a threat to score if given any time and space. He's a very smart player and can be trusted in all situations. Dorio has all the tools to become a top player at the next level. So, uh, Sarnia getting their guy. Colin Fitzgerald to the Peterborough Peets. From Peterborough. Played for the Peterborough Peets U16 team. Love that. All right. Here we go. I believe he was one of the guys that originally had been projected to... Um, 
go to another league, but I guess maybe they believe that the Sarnia or the Peterborough Peets can persuade their hometown guy to kind of stay in that area. The Ice Dogs are on the clock now for you guys wondering. Uh, it is the Niagara Ice Dogs time to pick here. So, so we'll wait and see uh, before we get into uh, to Colin Fitzgerald. He was ranked sixth in the Scouts mock draft. Um, so again, not uh, not as off the board as uh, as the second overall pick, but again. Uh, they definitely got a strong player there. We'll wait and see who the Ice Dogs pick. Who do you think it is? <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Brady Wasslin. I've been saying that from the beginning. Talked to that gentleman on the at the combine. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that real quick. Um, did an OHL combine interview with a bunch of players there live from the combine. Interviewed some general managers. So Brady Wasslin was a guy I looked at. And there you, there go. you go. We have it. There it is. All right, Brady Waslin, welcome to the Niagara Ice Dogs, and he was projected to go third. Um, so we get uh, we get a great player here again. I'm gonna read. This is by Keenan McEwen. Um, in terms of the write up, Waslin was a catalyst offensively all season long for the majors, and he should be available at three. Um, his his ability to read defenses and pick them apart was exciting to watch as he gained speed with powerful strides. Blowing past defenders, he was able to pull off moves at full speed and fire heavy shots at the net with accuracy, picking corners easily from anywhere in the offensive zone. Brady's vision is also high-end as he uses his teammates effectively, finding them with tape-to-tape -tape passes with tons of time and space, as well as using the give-and-go to beat defenders with one-touch passes. Should Wasselin end up... Um, available in the draft, he could step into a top six role right away and create a potent line um, uh, in, in the OHL. So extremely exciting there that we get an impact forward at number four. And, um, you know, a fantastic addition to the squad. Connor Williams, another guy from the, the scout.ca, says that Brady Watson, probably the most offensively dynamic player in the group. Watson has elite puck skills, a strong shot vision awareness, and will be an exciting add to a young Ice Dogs group. So some other scouts online saying that is a very interesting pick. And as you mentioned there in the mock draft, a guy that went upwards of, of three and down to five, but the Ice Dogs must have liked what they saw from the Markham Majors forward. And at the Combine, he was scoring some goals and was showing off uh, what he's able to do. So... Really exciting. The Ice Dogs are going to add another exciting, talented forward to this young group already. And you think about all the great 07s that they were able to bring in in an 06 with Kevin He. Now you're adding an 08 in Brady Wasslin. I mean, in a couple of years, this is going to be a team that you're going to look at and say that it's going to be, you know, one of the bright young rosters in all the Ontario Hockey League that is going to eventually turn into a very formidable veteran lineup in a few years. Oh, absolutely, and I think that uh, getting another dynamic forward is extremely important. Obviously, um, you know we're still in a stage where, like I mentioned, we've uh, we've got to take best available, and I, it looks to be like that is what exactly what we did uh, in in Wasslin. So a huge uh, a huge pick there, and I'm excited to see what he can do. And, and you know it adds an, an, the fact that we've got another dynamic forward in the top six is huge, um, especially when everyone's healthy. So you talk about you know. Um, Asadorian potentially as well as you know ha how that'll shake out and um, having the ability to have another line hop over the boards with a player that you know can really drive the play uh, on top of that first line is uh, is just going to be really big for us as it looks like we've got uh, the fifth overall pick for Barry. Parker Vaughn from the Elgin Middlesex Canucks goes fifth to the Barry Colts. Another gentleman I was able to speak with at the OHL Combine, another very skilled player. So a couple of guys that were at the OHL Combine go fourth and fifth overall. The Ice Dogs picked last year fifth overall with their compensatory pick that they got the year prior from the defected Sam Dickinson, and they took Ethan Zada in the spot. So some guys that do come to the Combine might end up getting a little bit of a, a, little bit of a bump from the GMs that were in attendance there. Um, and Parker Vaughn went to the Combine and did some good things, and now he's selected at fifth overall, had a great season uh, with Elgin Middlesex, and now Cole Zorowski for, uh, go from the Mississauga Rebels, who these are three players, three of the five players I talked to at the Combine just went fourth, fifth, and sixth Dude, overall. He rubbed on I, I got the I got the, give him the the little bit of a rub there, but regardless, I'm sure that wasn't it, but he goes from the Mississauga Rebels, which was Ethan Zada's uh, team uh, last year that he was able to get selected by the right winger goes to the Flint Firebirds at sixth overall. So all forwards so far through the first six picks in the OHL draft, and that was to be expected when you saw Zach Nyman commit to the BCHL. Yeah, obviously a, a big loss from, from the talent pool there. 
Um, Barry looking went through a really rough season. Um, you know, obviously a big injury early on, an uh, injury riddled uh, team early on, and just had a hard time, you know, making up for that. So now they enter their um, rebuild or rebuilding stages. Uh, and Flint gets uh, gets a good player as well in Zorowski. Um, I'm gonna read uh, again. He was projected to go seventh um, in in our mock. Uh, one of the purest goal scorers in the draft. Zorowski was the driving force of a Mississauga Rebels team that surprised a lot of people this year with their success. Along with his lethal shot, Cole plays a complete game consisting of a strong combination of compete, physicality, and playmaking ability. His consistency is what the mo is is what impressed the most as he is able to make his present felt every time he steps on the ice, whether it's scoring a big goal or dominating physically. His compete never wavered. Should Zorowski be available at 7, um, I believe it would be a, a massive pick to take him there. Um, so just uh, a good uh, good ability to get them, and they got him at 6, and it looks like Owen Sound, their pick is in as well. Pierce Mabui from the Toronto Marlboros. Another forward, a left winger, 5'10". So through seven picks, we've got seven forwards taken here uh, so far. And again, thank you to everybody that's uh, tuned in to the live chat here. We're going to continue to go over uh, the first round as an entirety as we go through the Ice Dogs picks as well uh, with a little bit of priority on them. Obviously, we're going to have some special guests throughout the night and throughout tomorrow. We'll have Brady Wasslin on the show tomorrow, most likely when he does get to the rink. And I'm sure he's going to be freaked out when he sees me again because I just talked to him at the combine. <laughs> so this kid's not going to be able to get away from me for the next couple of years. But uh, the Niagara Ice Dogs selected Brady Wasslin fourth overall in the 2024 OHL Priority Selection Draft. If we go through the historical, and I'm just going to pull it up here because I did, I was able to print off all that stuff here for you guys. We're going to go through the Ice Dogs drafts through the years with specific picks and see what they had available to them when they did select at that position. Um, Ice Dog fans, hold your breath for a minute. Sam Dickinson was drafted fourth overall, um, which obviously ended up working out for the Ice Dogs. They got Ethan Zada with the compensatory pick and were able to select Ryan Roebrook last year second overall. So uh, it wasn't all doom and gloom there with the Sam Dickinson pick. Um, as far as other fourth overall picks, I believe that was the only time the Ice Dogs have selected fourth overall as I'm quickly glancing through every single draft since they've been to Niagara. Yep, so this is only the second time that the Ice Dogs have drafted fourth overall in their franchise's history coming over from Mississauga when they were the Mississauga Ice Dogs. But very interesting there as Wasslin and, and we're continuing to go on with the forwards here. Seven forwards taken so far in the Ontario Hockey League draft. We're at Kingston at number eight. Another general manager I talked to, Corey Cooper, said they're going to take best available as well. Looks like I got Captain Gavin Bryant making an appearance there. Uh, he'll join us either today or tomorrow or whenever. Whenever the captain wants to join us. Whenever he wants. Whenever the captain yeah. wants, the captain can come on here. But uh, I'm sure he's been busy watching the Masters. But regardless, um, I don't know, Cam, if you had something to pull up there. No, I was just uh, just seeing who's still available that hasn't been taken. That's kind of surprising. Uh, Brady uh, Brady Smith, who I we thought that might ended up being Niagara's pick, as well as uh, did Parker Vaughn did go at five. So yeah, the only one uh, the only one that's kind of uh, fallen, kind of surprising, is Brady Smith, um, who uh, my good my good friend Stephen Ellis had at number four, um, as well as uh, in the mock draft that we've got was also. Um, the number four selection who really they both both guys actually did think uh, that uh, he was going to go inside the top four so we're currently at eight with Kingston um, and we'll see uh, we'll see how uh, how Kingston decides to go obviously a really heavy forward draft we'll see when the first defenseman gets taken um, obviously again you mentioned Zach Nyman obviously that's a massive blow but it looks like this is an extremely heavy forward draft <laughs> at least at the top Luca Blonda would be one of the higher rated ones um, as we wait in here yeah sorry if if we go if we go, go silent, silent we're just we're waiting, listening, yeah, we're to, listening the picks. to the picks coming Callum Crossgary as well from the Oakville Rangers Mal Holtra did I hear that right? Yeah. It was Caleb Malultra. Well, I thought he committed today to another league. Explain how that, sh that scenario will work out, though, because it doesn't necessarily – it doesn't – I mean – No, I mean, he still could commit to yeah. the Kingston Frontenacs. It's just um, – I mean, we see this all the time when it comes to college sports and recruiting. How many guys say they're committing somewhere and then 
next season or halfway through the year they end up committing somewhere else. I mean, we see it all the time when it comes to college football and things like that, but obviously Kingston wouldn't take him that high if they didn't think they at least had a shot at getting him over here. I mean, we've seen teams like the London Knights take chances later on in the first round on guys that most likely would have been top five talents, and they take them with a late first or an early second, and they're able to recruit them to their program. So it really is a lot of recruiting, and it, it, it's a really good job on the Niagara Ice Dogs to get a guy like Brady Waslin to, to commit to them because he, in some mock drafts, went as high as, as second overall behind behind Belchez. So mm-hmm. for the, the fact that the Ice Dogs were able to get him recruited and that's a big part of what you have to do with the OHL draft uh, as opposed to maybe some other drafts. Um, I'm trying to see who they're losing this year. Well, I, I believe Paul Lewinsky is an overager. Yeah, I was just going to say Lewinsky, I believe, is the overager. So the Ice Dogs do pick again for those wondering, and you're here for the Niagara Ice Dogs draft. The Ice Dogs pick again 30th overall. They do not have their second-round pick. It belongs to the Windsor Spitfires, of course, who beat them in the lottery. Uh, but the Ice Dogs do have the Guelph's second-round pick, which is... 30th overall. That'll be the next Ice Dogs pick. We're currently sitting here at the ninth pick as the Guelph Storm take Alex McLean from the Barry Jr. Colts, another forward. So we're at nine, nine for nine so far for forwards. So very interesting to After see. Defenseman goes first overall last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple of top. Def- I'm, I'm going to try to. The guys that were at the Combine, I'm going to go over and just kind of see how many guys that were at the Combine ended up becoming first-round picks. So you've already had three there with Waslin, Parker Vaughn, and Cole Zorowski were all guys that were at the OHL Combine that ended up going uh, in the first round. So it's, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, if you go to an event like that and you wonder about is it going to be worth your time, Mm -hmm. I think that goes to show you right there that if you put in the time going to the Ontario Hockey League Combine, and I think it's just going to continue to get better and better as an event itself because last year there might have been a couple of guys there that uh, were projected first-rounders, but for the most part I believe that they're probably going to continue to to get more and more top end players that go to this thing like we see with other combines around other sports. I think it's important and it's showing that just making yourself known and maybe fresh in people's minds showing that you know you're available and that they can see your skill sets for off ice training on ice uh, I guess you know those, those drills that they go through with the, the agility and speed and all that I think that does make make a difference for the general managers to just kind of get a, a last minute look at, at what they have available to them no absolutely I mean I think anytime you you are able to you know show off in, in front not to mention just get to speak and see like meet with who, who your potential teams like obviously that's going to go a long way when you actually um get to learn a little bit more in depth uh, and, and meeting face to face you get to learn a little bit more about the person um because as we've learned you know being a great hockey player is is obviously of the utmost importance but uh being a good leader and being a good teammate is uh, also something that needs to happen for uh for you to succeed especially in the OHL so um got another pick here with the Erie Otters Tyler Challenger from the North York Rangers, another left winger. 10 for 10. Rod, we're batting 10 for 10 right now in baseball terms for forwards right now. So, yeah, Goalies <laughs> going before <laughs> defensemen. So we got Rod Mahood from the Niagara Sports Report making a uh, big, bold prediction here that a goaltender will go before a defenseman in this Ontario Hockey League draft here. So A couple of guys. Uh, Tyler Challenger, uh, again, in our mock draft, uh, Slay, he, they had him going 13th, so not really a stretch here. I'll read uh, a little bit about Tim. This is from uh, Joel E. Stockel. Um, think about how incredible... Um, this is, again, it depending, again, a mock draft, but... Um, uh, where we at? Uh, Challenger plays a very mature game, and he is one of a few natural centers in this draft class. He's a physically mature six foot two, hundred ninety pounds, but his methods of offensive creation around the net and his ability to drive the puck uh, also translate to the OHL level right now. He generates a lot of his offense around the net, whether he is creating chaos out front, making plays down low, or driving to the middle with his strength. Uh, Challenger knows how to play his role in the offensive zone. He's a very explosive skater for his size as well, and right now his pace would be average in the OHL. Impressive for a six foot two, sixteen year old. He's going to score a lot of flashy goals at the junior level uh, with his hands and manipulation, uh, but he's also going to score a lot of garbage goals around the net. It's easy to see Challenger making an OHL lineup today, and that's what makes him valuable to a team uh, early on in the first round. Also, um, I mean, that just kind of goes great in what the Ice Dogs need, in my opinion. <laughs> we talk, how much did we talk about that last year that we had two of the most heavy shooters in the entire league in Rubric and Kevin, and we just needed to see some more goals that were some of the more ugly goals. So 
Um, pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. And Valentini has yet to been taken, so that t- tells you a lot that the guy that's projected to go second overall because of the projected com- – um, he's committed to another league here. So, But I'm sure some team is going to take him, so we'll have no. to wait and see. No, absolutely, and uh, we'll see how the rest of it shakes out. Um, but, yeah, uh, you, like you mentioned, um, Valentini not taken yet. We'll see uh, where he goes. And, um, you know, some surprising picks for sure, uh, I guess, uh, in terms of uh, not whole show. Nathan Amidovsky, centerman, Ottawa. Okay. From the Barry Jr. Colts. So we're 11 for 11 with forwards. Great. Ottawa was fantastic this year. Yeah. One, yeah. Of, the, one of the tougher teams. Like, the Ice Hogs always played them hard. But, man, were they a load to deal with. And when you got a, a guy like Dave Cameron, who has coached a lot of players that have gone on to play well in pro hockey, that's also a guy that you look at. Luca Blonda. There it is. That's our first defenseman. There we go. First defenseman, 12th overall to the Sudbury Wolves from the Pittsburgh Penguins Elite 15s. Let's go. There we go. But he's, he, his hometown is Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, so he's not going far from Sudbury. I got to uh, I got to give uh, props here on the uh, on the um, Imadovsky pick. As uh, that was what it looked like, where where it would where he would land, so uh, impressive there. And then you had Blonda, who was projected to go 14th, uh, roughly. Um, so a, a pretty big, uh, kind of again in the range where it looked like uh, looked like he was going to go. So, um, yeah, obviously uh, to recap real quick for everyone that's just joining us, uh, getting Brady Waslin fourth overall. We'll be going to the Niagara Ice Dogs, and he'll uh, join our. Forward core that's highlighted by Rubrick and, and Kevin He, as well as Gavin Bryant, the co- the captain he named halfway through the season. Um, exciting uh, times now, getting another dynamic forward. Absolutely, and when you look at, at this guy, this kid, he still he won't even turn 16 until the end of May. So he's 15 right now. His birthday it's at the end of May. So that's another guy that you look at, another bright young player coming to this team. 62 points in 32 games, 31 goals, 31 assists for the Markham Majors this season. What would so that make his draft year again? Just to draft year, it would be it would be earlier. It wouldn't be two full seasons. Right? No, it'd be one. Yeah, it wouldn't be like Robrick's. Where like for, for those wondering, Ryan Robrick still has two more years yeah, of that's eligibility. We, we didn't realize that early on, and the late birthday. Yep. So we'll have to wait and see with that. But Brady Waslin. Again, one of the highly touted players in the Ontario Hockey League draft goes fourth same overall. Same draft year. It'll be the same draft year as, as Ryan. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, Ryan's in 07. No, no, oh, no. Same draft year. Yes, yes, you're right. Same draft Same NHL draft NHL draft. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, they would most likely be That's drafted in crazy, the same yeah. year in the, when it does come up. So. Uh, that will be interesting to see down the road if the Ice Dogs are able to. Obviously, that's a... a yeah, way down the road. Yeah, we're, we're getting the cart in front of the horse a little bit here. But yeah. just, again, something to keep in mind, you know, as we're going to have one of the, as it currently stands, one of the most, uh, one of the highly to- highest touted uh, NHL draft picks potentially in the next two years in, in rubric. So. Absolutely. So we are currently at the 12th overall pick. The first defenseman just win in Luca Blonda. Mississauga's on the clock. To the Sudbury Wolves. Mississauga is on the Here clock. Here comes the goaltender. <laughs> if they take another goaltender like Jack Ivankovic, and we saw with Ryerson Leanders, we'll first have to wait and see. Potential chance that one OHL franchise could send Team Canada's World Junior goalie tandem. The, like the, the fact that that's not even out of the realm of possibility just goes to show how insane that is that in you know, in one team in the CHL having two of the best Canadian goaltenders. Absolutely. But we'll get more draft coverage for you guys throughout the night here. We're going to take our first commercial break here to give Cam and I a little bit of a break. The Ice Dogs do select again in the second round, but they have taken Brady Wasslin fourth overall. So we'll be right back here on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs. Probably brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family in all four of the great Niagara region locations. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes here. Hang tight. Pets bring immense joy to our homes, becoming an integral part of our families. But this living, loving experience often requires a little extra care and attention. That's where Global Pet Foods comes in, with owners and staff ready to support you every step of the way. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. 
Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Proud to sponsor the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Wild Builds Auto Repair is your local center for auto maintenance and repair in the Niagara region. Since 2012, Wild Builds Auto Repair and Body Shop has been helping customers stay safe and confident on the road, knowing their vehicles in top running condition through their services. Located at 7868 Oakwood Drive in Niagara Falls, the garage started as a tribute to the owner's father, William Robert Hunter, who passed away, continuing the same community spirit and high level of service which customers came to expect from him back at Hunter's Auto Repair. Their multi-award winning auto shop has earned the trust of the Niagara community with its fair treatment of all customers who can feel confident they'll get the trustworthy advice and repairs during their visit. Their experienced crew loves meeting new people and looks forward to forming a lasting partnership for the care of your cars. To find out more or to book a service, contact them today. 905-358-7868 or wildbillsauto.ca. Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. Niagara Golf Lounge features two state-of-the-art indoor golf simulators allowing you to play some of the world's best courses all year round. The perfect place to indulge all season long. Don't worry about getting thirsty while you play around with your friends. Their fully stocked bar offers a wide selection of drinks, appetizers, and a variety of meals are also available to enjoy before, during, or after you play. Grab a seat next to the fire in their comfortable sports lounge. Didn't bring your clubs? No problem. They have partnered with TaylorMade to offer you the best rental clubs. You won't want to miss their exclusive NFL and NHL giveaways for the Buffalo Sabres and Buffalo Bills. Located in the Best Western Plus Cairncroft Hotel, 6400 Lundy's Lane in Niagara Falls. Visit NiagaraGolfVacations.com to learn more and to reserve your golf bay today. The Niagara Golf Lounge, Niagara's home for golf and sport all year round. Are you looking to hire? Let the Niagara Employment Help Center save you valuable time and money by making your hiring process easier. Their services include free job postings in-house and on their website, fill job vacancies quickly and efficiently, access to a bank of potential employees, reduce employment costs, and financial incentives may be available to offset the cost of new hire training. Check out the website at ehc.on.ca or call 905-358-0021 for more information. The Niagara Employment Help Center, helping people find work since 1983. In the Niagara region, Global Pet Foods is your destination for premium pet nutrition and caring expertise. Whether you've welcomed a new furry family member or need advice on top quality nutrition, their dedicated staff is ready to help. Discover why Global Pet Foods' lesser-known premium brands outshine the big corporate names. Their team's passion ensures your pet's health and vitality. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. Global Pet Foods, where premium brands and caring staff make the difference. JNL Flooring is Niagara's specialty flooring and design company. They take great pride and provide elite customer service and support. With a beautiful showroom, great pricing, and a wide variety of truly unique products, JNL Flooring is your specialty flooring and decor boutique shop. All of their products are environmentally friendly and responsibly produced so you can feel good about your flooring choices. Their goal is to build authentic relationships based on honesty and integrity that they foster with respect and authenticity. Offering a unique and wide range of quality products presented by a knowledgeable and patient team, they simplify the process to make your life easier and to make your home more beautiful. Visit them at 4424 Montrose Road in Niagara Falls or find out more at jnlflooring.com. If you think you can get a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack at JNL Flooring. Since 1999, Niagara Dental Clinic has been helping thousands of patients achieve natural-looking smiles with the confidence to show them off. Sean Battelle and his wife Anne, both licensed denturists, bring a wealth of skill and experience to the warm and friendly atmosphere to their Niagara Falls location at 5501 Drummond Road. And their on-site Niagara Hearing Clinic offers free hearing tests and a variety of services to fit your needs. This family-run practice takes pride in providing superior care and service to their patients, along with the best premium products available on the market. Get the best work done at a more reasonable price. 
Niagara Dental Clinic is here to help. Protect your teeth with a mouth guard, replace missing teeth, and get better hold with your dental implants. Call them today for a free consultation at 905-353-1552 or check them out online at NiagaraDentureClinic.com. Niagara Dental Clinic, creating natural smiles in the Niagara region for 25 years. Are you currently looking for work in the Niagara region? If so, you owe it to yourself to check out the services provided by the Niagara Employment Help Center located at 6100 Thoroughstone Road in Niagara Falls. Their many free services include a fully staffed resource area open to the public, resume and cover letter writing, local labor market information, job search strategies, assistance with clarifying employment, training and career goals, employment counseling and job search support, Better Jobs Ontario information and registration assistance, and you can check out their website at ehc.on.ca or call 905-358-0021 for more information. The Niagara Employment Help Centre, helping people find work since 1983. This is Alex Asadorian. Hey, it's Ryan Roberg. This is Ivan Galianov. This is Gavin Bryant. And this is the Dog Pound Podcast. The official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Welcome back to our OHL draft live stream here on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs. Proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods, a pretzel are undeniably part of the family. Brandon Caputo and Cam Halbert are with you right outside the Ice Dogs draft room here at the Meridian Center. We're going over their draft and we'll be with you all weekend long for the draft coverage. We're going to have interviews with the players tomorrow as well as uh, guests in and out uh, for the rest of the night tonight. Breaking down rounds one, two, and three tonight and then rounds four through 15 as we go on for those just joining us thank you very much for doing so make sure to give us a follow at dog pound podcast as well as facebook instagram tiktok raw and all that sort of thing and to those watching us on the youtube live stream thank you very much for doing so and if you enjoy the pod uh, uh, this version of the podcast make sure to hit like and hit subscribe so for those recapping what the ice dogs have done so far brady waslin going fourth overall to the Niagara Ice Dogs, the Marka Majors forward, who was at the OHL Combine, did get to talk to him. That uh, episode is live on the channel right now as well on our OHL Combine weekend. And Cam, when we talk about what the Ice Dogs are possibly getting here, we look at the projected lineup. We're at pick number 15 right now. We've still only had one defenseman taken out of the first 15 picks, so we'll, we'll continue to bring you uh, live uh, coverage of the, the picks themselves. But uh, quickly going over the Ice Dogs lineup and you look at what's available here uh, with the projected lineup and you think Brady Waslin, it's a lot to ask for a 16-year-old. We saw it last year with, with what Robrick and Zada were able to do with, with Galianov and Frolov all kind of being thrown into big roles and, and really taking taking big steps. But you look at it and you add Brady Waslin to, you're, you're going to assume a middle six forward spot already. Uh, that, that's a pretty formidable lineup when you expect Kevin He to take a big jump once once he's drafted. Gavin Bryant coming back as the captain for the f- full season here for his overage year, and Ryan Robrick after he broke every single record that this uh, this team had for for a rookie. Just it's exciting when you look at at possibly Ben Boudreaux's lineup card going into this year, adding a guy like Brady Waslin. No, absolutely, and I'm excited to see uh, just you know where he fits uh, in, in camp and, and where he's going to play if he is going to play center. Um, I think that's something that, you know, the team kind of messed around with a little bit in rubric playing center, f- you know, more out of necessity. Um, obviously, so successful on the wing this year, and you've got Kevin, who is a natural winger as well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think center is probably where we need the biggest uh, assistance because, uh, again, Zada was a, uh, had a good season, but it was a lot more of the X's and O's as opposed to the box score. He was playing center a lot more than Robert. Was. Exactly, yeah, he was actually playing center. But if he's able to play, like, third line, um, or, or, you know, maybe make that jump. But if you have someone, if he, he is able to make that jump and play a second line center, um, and we'll see where Waslin kind of fits in. But we've also still got Asadorian. Uh, we've also got some pretty big question marks when it comes to overagers as well. You've still got Potalu, who was on his way to having just an absolutely incredible season. I think that uh, he was definitely the most improved year over year player. Um, on the Ice Dogs, and uh, unfortunate with injury as he went down, but uh, we'll see how that shakes out as well. Um, but you've also got Levin, who uh, was ended up being a, a great goal scorer, especially in the middle parts of the season. He was really the leader offensively for a little while there as well. So 
uh, just great to get into their offensive force, and uh, we'll see how the draft kind of shakes out. I think that we're still, like I mentioned when the pick was in, that uh, we're at uh, pick the best player available, and we're not really in a situation just yet to kind of you know pick by position or by need. So we'll see uh, how it goes, but still kind of surprising. I think that the one thing as uh, while we were while we were gone, um, Valentini was taken as well as uh, Aiden O'Donnell. Uh, he went to Brantford. Uh, and then we had Evan Hen- uh, Hedrick, who went to Kitchener. So now we've got North Bay on the clock, and you talked about this a lot near this season. They went all in, and they're doing very well, but next year could be really tough for them. Which team? Uh, North Bay. North Bay, yes, absolutely. They're in the second round right now. They take Ry- Ryder Carey from the Oakville Rangers. So some o- Oakville Rangers have gone here. That's Ethan Belchez's team. Uh, with, with uh, Hedrix and Ryder Carey. So back-to-back centermen again, most likely. Some of these guys will never play center uh, in the Ontario Hockey yeah. League, but they're drafted as centermen that can move to the wing uh, once they hit the next level. Just like the same thing with the OHL. When the, some of the guys get drafted to the NHL, they might not end up projecting to be centers throughout their whole entire career, but it uh, looks like you've got something there. Well, yeah, again, and again, uh, North Bay is going to go through a pretty extensive uh, rebuild, much to uh, akin to... Uh, Windsor went through this year where they were one of the best teams in the OHL. Obviously, you go all in, you've got kind of a short window there, and then you've got to rebuild as uh, as Windsor had a, one of their tougher seasons that they've had. Uh, quick note on Ryder Carey. Um, this one, uh, this comes in from uh, Brock Otten. Uh, Carey was the perfect complement to line mates Belchez and Hedrick. And so their entire line is now drafted um, this year because of his speed, skill, and creativity as a playmaker. He can really drive the pace of play, and I think he can easily develop into a three- or four-year scoring line forward in the league. He should be a first-round selection, in my opinion, um, and uh, that is the case as he goes to North Bay. So, um, again, he's going to be very important for them next year for sure. Got five picks left in the first round here. Oshawa, Sioux, Saginaw, London, and Ottawa before we get to round two. But again, only one defenseman taken. But we we go back to North Bay real quick. This is a team that's doubled down. They went for it last year, lost in the conference final. They're doubling down, going for it again with guys like Ty Nelson and hoping that they can kind of get through. And you look at it, you're going to think that they're going to be a team in the Central Division that's going to be rebuilding. So... Uh, that's a team that the Ice Dogs, if, if things go their way, could leapfrog next year in the Central Division with the North Bay Battalion having to kind of restock a, the, their draft pick cupboard at some point. If Ty Nelson comes back for his overage season, you would think that they'd be able to to really recoup some draft capital for him to kind of accelerate that rebuild. Good. My goodness. If he comes back again, he has been, I, I mentioned this before, he has been my favorite non-Ice Dog to watch this season. Um Dominant offensively, very physical, stands up for his teammates. Uh, I think that he is probably. I'd be surprised if he came back for his overage year. He'd been that'd have been two years removed, right? He'd be able to go to the AHL, no? Yeah, he would be able to. He would be able to go. Yeah. I would be pretty surprised. I mean, again, and obviously things translate at the pro level much higher. Um, but that is uh, uh, Seattle, correct? Yep. Yeah. So uh, Seattle, by is, the way, has like an OHL All Star prospect team. Yeah. It is unbelievable. You the Charlotte amount of too. prospects that the Seattle Kraken have taken from the Ontario Hockey League. You think about the Shane Wrights, the Ty Nelsons, the Tucker Robertsons of the world, and I'm Charlotte missing a few play. other guys. He was hurt well. quite a bit, I believe. Edward Chala. Yeah, but that was uh, he was on. He's a very yeah, uh, but he, I don't even really count him because he was he came in the import draft. True, afterward. yeah, much like Gushin. Yeah, but still, like Seattle must have a lot of scouts here in the Ontario Hockey League and value those guys. That's why we bring up the fact that like you know when Kevin gets drafted and Rubric has a lot of national attention in the sense of like you know being a Canadian, you know being one of the higher projected picks again. Knock on wood, and everything goes to plan. Um, why it's so important because you see players and teams start. You know, really following specific teams. I mean, it was always a joke. Dubas taking players from the Sioux, you know, for yep. example. So you know that when that's what we were talking have about that when it comes to yeah, when when you start when you when you rebuild the franchise, uh, these are things that you start to see more of, and and it's definitely we're well on our way. Oh, there we go. Big, big one here. Brady Smith falls to the Oshawa Generals at 17th overall from the North York Rangers. That was in this mock draft that we were able to find. That they had the ice dogs go taking ice dogs. fourth overall. So I would love to know what what was you know, and again, there's a lot that goes on, especially at this level when you're drafting uh, when you're drafting guys that that are in their teens, right? Like there's a lot yeah. of other things that factors, and you know, projecting just pure hockey skill, you're you're 
also having to factor in size and you know and, and some of the other things that uh, that we're just not privy to. But yeah, he was projected again by everyone that I talked to to go in this other top five. So the fact that he fell to Oshawa, another good team, um, very surprising. While everybody's still here, uh, we do have something that's coming up here in a couple of days, and we just really want to plug this real quick. We're nominated uh, for the Community Votes Niagara. We've got it in the description below here of this YouTube video. We're nominated in the entertainment uh, category. The top ten move on to the final round of voting. If you guys could uh, go give us some love over there. Voting is open for another day or so for the 2024 uh, Niagara Region Community Awards here. So we'd really appreciate if you guys would give us a bump for that. It's in the description of our YouTube video there as we continue to build our credibility here as a local Niagara business. As we go back to the draft here, Cam, and, and when you talk about what you just said there about Ty Nelson, you've got to think that there are going to be some overagers available in the off season for the ice dogs to pick up because right now they've got a few guys that could potentially be overagers. You know, Gavin Bryant's coming back as the captain, but when you look at that decor, they could definitely use a couple of veterans back there, especially when you're losing the heart and soul, like Connor Federico and what he brought to this team this year, they're going to need to have another guy like that. So, you know, that there's going to be some guys available, maybe not the Ty Nelsons of the world, but some other guys that are going to be available from some of these teams that are really loading up and going to have a, a ton of 2004 birth years, which will be the overage year next year. So there is opportunity for the Ice Ducks to go out and kind of bolster their lineup, fix that decor a little bit because we saw that down the end of the season and Ben Boudreau talked about them limping to the finish line but not having enough bodies in the lineup. You'd hope that they would go out and, and kind of try to fill those other two overage spots to, to really fill out the rest of their roster and help out such a young, talented group. No, absolutely. We, we talked about this in num numerous times on, on the game recaps that as the season went along, that you know we've now got Rubrik and, and Kevin Heaney. And Brian's like a pretty big step forward offensively as well. I don't think that gets talked about enough. He's a leading scorer. Are right behind? It was very close. They were both at 50 Gavin points. Gavin Bryant led the team in points. He led the team in points. That's yep. what I was referring to. So, you know, you've got some good offensive forwards, and obviously now Brady Wasson's going to step in, and you'd have to assume that he's going to have a prominent role, at least uh, pretty early on. Um, and then you've still got Asadori and Levin, so these guys can all put the puck in the net. But on the back end, that's where we really have... The power play has really lacked that uh, hard, accurate shot from the point. And I think that if you are going to go the overage route for a position that this team specifically probably want to focus on some defenders that, um, you know, can play physical like Federico did. Sobolev before Sobolev, he was moved. Sobolev, exactly. Like, those are, those are the types of players that I think that, especially when you consider overagers and um, just like, Playing against seventeen and eighteen year olds, right? Like a twenty year old is it's a significant difference. It's a man, you know what I mean? So it's a significant difference. And on the back end, obviously, you know, physicality is that that most important. So if they are able to, you know, get some big defenders, some overage defenders, I think that would just go a long way, especially with the um, lack of defense being selected early on. Again, uh, this draft is clearly heavily in in forwards. I mean, there's been one defenseman selected, and we're eighteen picks in. Um, so just, just kind of crazy there, but I definitely think that we're, see, I would love, I don't know the price tag on that. If, if Ty Nels again, <laughs> like I, you know what I mean? That's scary. Cause I feel like a deal like that only happens for, a, for, um, an OHL championship team. Kind of like the Shane Wright deal when he got sent back. And some guys get sent back later. Exactly. We saw guys that get sent back. Shane Wright wasn't didn't start the year in the Ontario Hockey League. And you usually see it right after the World Juniors. Some guy has a big World Juniors. And their Patra, NHL team. Had he not been hurt, I believe. Yep. And like, their NHL teams uh, don't really have a use for them at that time. And they send them back to juniors to get a bump. And we saw Shane Wright. He didn't even report to the Kingston Frog next. They knew immediately that they were going to be dealing him in the situation that they were his in. His situation was so unique, though, because he couldn't play in Seattle. And they tried to keep him up. And they tried to kind of manipulate their ability. Because if, you, if you're scratched five games in a row, you can go to a conditioning stint, play five games in the AHL before you have to play a game in the NHL. And... Um, there was a time where someone, I believe it was Ty Karcha in his rookie season, he got hurt in pregame, and in his fourth game, so he had to miss one more. Shane Wright actually had to play, which reset his clock, which means he had to then sit another five games before going down, and then he went to the World Juniors, and he, they wanted him to you know, play a full, he couldn't play in the AHL full season. They wanted him to play on a, on a you know, potential championship run, and it's crazy that Windsor team. I mean, Kitchener was not a true eight seed that year, mm -hmm. but... I mean, obviously now, because if you look at the team now, but it just 
you know, that, that Windsor team getting swept is just gnarly to me. Like, and, that is that's crazy. And when you look at those teams that are bolstering up, they, they like the Saginaw Spirits, uh, Damian Jilkin was gone to the Saginaw Spirit. I believe he was an honorable mention um, from Julie Stockel in that mock draft, if I'm recalling correctly. But um, another forward. So we're 18 of 19 for the is first round. Is that a round. record? I'd love to see that. That's got to be something Rod Mahood's got to look up for us. <laughs> It's got to be a record, yeah. Because, I mean, 18 of 19. So, Luca Blonda was the only defenseman taken by the Sudbury Wolves. So, yeah, you, you are correct. This is Jolie Stockel um, on uh, Dima Zilkin. Uh If Zilkin was 5'10", he would be a no-brainer to be a first-round pick in this draft. Instead, his size, unfortunately, plays a big factor in his value. This is a player with very high ceiling. Uh, the brother of former OHLer Danny Jilkin is an incredibly uh, explosive and creative winger that can generate offense in droves with his electric pace. He handles contact tremendously well at this level, and his evasiveness helps him dodge pressure in tight areas. He creates space at a high level, and his confidence with the puck is at high at all times. Jilkin could be an electric top-line player and creator in the OHL, but the concerns with his size and slightness could hold him back. Jilkin, the defenseman? Like the uh, his brother. Yes. That's what I'm thinking of for yeah. Peterborough or Guelph. 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 Yep. Memory serves. Yeah. He's a right winger to Saginaw, like you mentioned, five foot six. So I guess if his size was a little bit better, he might have gone a little bit higher in this draft. But Saginaw, the Memorial Cup host this year, uh, will get a good that one isn't in, talked in him. About, like, you know what I mean? Like that, that isn't, I can, you know what I mean? It's kind of overlooked that that team is going to go to the Memorial Cup. So whoever makes the finals this year is a. Well, potentially, if they both do. Yeah, two but out of four But that's how chance. it looks like. Yeah, you've got a two out of exactly. Yep, and they just got Josh Bloom back, former Buffalo Sabres Buffalo Saber. draft pick. They former traded him to the Vancouver Canucks. North Bay Battalion? For, uh, he, hey, look at me. He was originally a Saginaw Spirit, actually, and then they traded him to the North Bay Battalion mm-hmm. last year at the trade deadline, and then he went up to Vancouver, wasn't really playing with Abbotsford, and then he got sent back and... North Bay had released him, so he went back and signed with the, his original team in Saginaw that he was the oh, captain that. with. So, uh, look at that. Know, really want to see Josh Bloom do well uh, in uh, Saginaw, as well as former Ice Dog Rodwin Denisio going to be in the Memorial Cup as well with uh, with the Saginaw Spirit. So they've got a very loaded team in the second round against the Sioux Greyhounds. Rodwin was drafted by Anaheim, correct? Yep. And you, like you said, Man, Anaheim's they are just a, a defenseman <laughs> factor. Like that is incredible. <laughs> Did you, like, last year they won uh, the entire CHL Defenseman of the Year. They yeah. had drafted a player for – they had the drafted player that won Defenseman of the Year in the entire CHL. Yeah, with uh, Minchikov. Zellweger, Minchikov, and Luno. Crazy. That's like – I that as, can't – As Sharks You ever fans, seen that, that's... Ron? <laughs> you ever seen a team draft or have all three CHL leagues Defender of the Year? I don't know if that'll ever. Uh, well, maybe the Leafs could take some notes from that. Anyways yeah. – London, 20th overall here. Logan Howery from the Barry Jr. Colts goes at the second last pick of the first round. Trying to find where he was. Uh, projected to go 11th. So uh, by that you know measure, um, reading, about, uh, reading about Logan. Uh, after a successful season playing under 16 as an underager last year, Howery came into the season already as a highly touted prospect. And getting him outside of the top 10 is great value. Uh, Howery is a powerful skater with an explosive stride, good body control, and he plays the game with good pace. He maintains his speed with the puck on his stick and can make plays extremely quickly. He possesses a lethal shot with a quick release and good accuracy, and he's terrific vision using fake shots to stall goaltenders. Uh, he's a player who has the ability to step into the lineup full time as soon as next year, so a uh, good pick there for Ottawa. We finally had another one. Def- Ottawa takes a defenseman. I'm not even going to attempt to say this guy's name, Cam, if you want to go ahead and try. Cohen Eshquakogan. What a name. That is a th- – I – yeah. Good luck trying Rod, to pronounce that. Yeah, that's yeah, – Rod, uh, Rod's going to have a hard time PA. pronouncing that over the PA. Holy cow. But, yes, he goes to the Ottawa 67s, right defenseman, five foot eight. I was about to say, yeah, he is listed as 5'8". Yep, five foot eight from the North York Rangers. What's wow, a five eight defenseman. Uh, Luca Cagnoni in the WHL doesn't really care about that. Yeah, I guess Sharks not. Prospect. Yeah. Uh, so two out of twenty one. 
19 forwards taken here in the uh, in the first round of the OHL draft. That's got to be a record. No goaltender was taken, but two defensemen, uh, one by Sudbury and one by Ottawa, both right D. So no left D were taken if anybody's really caring Blake, about the hand. Blake handles. Bell's got a write-up on, on Cohen. Uh, he's a dynamic puck-moving defenseman who is able to drive transition into offensive play uh, from the back end for his teammates through his speed, vision, and puck handling ability. Equipped with a hand, a hard, accurate shot, as well as an excellent playmaking skills, he has all the tools to cement himself as a uh, cement himself as a highly mobile blue line threat in the OHL. Keep an eye on Esh, man, okay, <laughs> Esh Kakogan. There you go on draft day. Esh he is Kukogan. a name that I feel could be be called during the first round. So there we go. So he was uh, an honorable mention, but it uh, uh, wasn't surprising to see him be taken at the end. So we've now gotten to the second round here. And the Ice Dogs do not have their second-round pick. This belongs to the Windsor Spitfires they here. Draft the next two of three, so big haul there for Windsor. Niagara will pick 30th. We're on pick number 22. Try to if find we, some first-rounders that weren't taken. Go ahead. I was just going to go over some of the Ice Dogs' second-rounders from the past yep. here that ended up making <laughs> an we impact. We got one. Well, we got Artem Frolov. Oh, I was going to say Kevin, but yes. And Kevin Frolov, he, yes. Kevin He, Artem Frolov, the last two second round picks. That's pretty so that's good. They've hit on that. Wait, I'm, I believe <laughs> if you go back one more year or two, or they had Joey Costanzo. And uh, Declan Waddick, who is a 30-goal scorer. Those are both full-time OHLers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Costanzo was a starting goalie for Windsor. Waddick was a 30-goal scorer with Niagara last year, or close to 30-goal scorer. You had Alec Leonard, who's still uh, a piece of the London Knights decor right now. And I believe that would be it for possible second rounders that are still playing in the league. Uh, the rest of them are uh, have aged out in that sense we go back even further here billy constantino the ice dogs actually didn't have a second round pick in 2019 or 2018 so, yeah, it's probably because they were going and that. 2016 which was they only got a keel thomas in the first round then they didn't pick in the se second or third round that what year. was given up in the robertson trade? oh a lot that must I'll have just been, say like, that I, I mean that's why we probably don't have any second rounders then. a lot chris Paquette. Zach Wilkie, these are probably names for those Ice Dog fans going back in the years. Brett Moran, the goaltender. Carter Verhage in 2011. There we go. The second round is good to the Ice Dogs. Yep. So good round for the Ice Dogs. Second round. They've got a lot of guys that have ended up going on to have great OHL and NHL careers. But in the last few years, Kevin He and Artem Frolov are so, probably the most notable. So again, the, uh, in, the, in that mock draft that we were given... Um, there's only a few players that weren't taken that were taken in this mock draft. Callum, uh, Callum uh, Crossgury, defenseman from the Oakville Rangers, he was not selected yet. Um, Pierce Mbayou? Yeah. I believe. Um, he was not taken from the Toronto Marlboros. Cole Emerton. No, oh, Pierce Mbayou was taken he was seventh taken. I thought I heard his name. I, yeah. thought, I thought I heard his name. He was the one that went in succession because Cal Caleb uh, Malhotra went. Um, Cole Emerton? I don't believe was selected yet. Nope. So there's another option, defenseman. So I feel like the second round is going to feature a lot of defensemen considering the first round had none. The 19 of 21. Yeah. We've got Weston Cameron. I don't believe was selected yet. Nope. Alexander Hage. Nope. And m potentially my favorite name in the entire draft, Maximus Crete. Ooh, that's a good name that's right there. That's a mean there. name. Maximus From Crete. Upper Canada Cyclones. That's pretty good. So those are the ones that were taken in the mock draft of the first round that did not get actually picked in the first round of this uh, of, the, of the priority draft. So uh, we'll wait and see. There's still a lot of honorable mentions as well. Um, again, this is a situation where we want the Ice Dogs to just take best available, but there are a few defensemen, and I think that if you've got to make the tiebreaker choice here um, with Rubrik He, Gavin, and now Brady Wasslin, you know, uh, might be okay to take a defenseman, uh, depending on how things shake out. Uh we're obviously going to get Wysik back, who was, God, it was, we did not realize how much we missed him. Yeah, especially you know, on the on the power, power play, play as well. He was kind of turning into that power play quarterback. And you look at the last two I years, mean, he's been riddled by injuries the last two years. And but that's something that has really to be considered. To see. Right? Like, that's something that has to be considered. It means you probably have to have at least seven, uh, potentially eight defensemen, in, you know, just in, in case of that situation. Um, so uh, we'll wait and see. 
I mean, we look at the, the projected decor for next year. Again, barring any trades and or selections here. Andrew Weissach, Urban Padre Carr, both 05 birth years that would be back. Artem Frolov and Ryan Van Netten, who's an overager. So, again, there's still some decisions to be made there. Callum Chanowski, who they acquired last year, was a former second round or third round pick of the Brantford Bulldogs. He's a 2006 birth year. Darcy DeWatch and Roman Boudou have both that were call ups throughout the year. You lose a guy like Connor Federico, your heart and soul. You trade away Daniil Sobolev. You trade away Bronson Ride. So this Ice Dogs decor has really been flipped upside down in the last year or so from what we saw going into the 2023 season. I mean, from the 2022 season right. to 23, we saw, I mean, who were the holdovers there from that team? Ride and Wysik? Basically, yeah. And that was it because Sobolev was trading the offseason. Um, Van Netten was also there as well. Van Netten was there, yeah. He he finished the season there, and, yeah. and Sobolev was uh, Sobolev was it was acquired. Yeah, but Frolov to me is the X factor because if he takes another step forward here, and we saw in the last ten games or so, Ben Boudreaux has really given him an opportunity to showcase his offensive game. He was t- taking carrying the puck in from his own end. We saw him go end to end a few times getting a chance as the power play quarterback as well. I feel like the first three quarters of the year, they wanted to learn how to play defense at the Ontario Hockey League level, and then they started to kind of take the chains off a little bit and let him play it a little bit more offense. So I think if Artem Frolov takes another big step this year as a 17-year-old defenseman running your power play, that's a big step forward for this Ice Dog team that can hopefully you know take a step forward and have their decor stay healthy. Again, we'll have to wait and see what they do with any trades or things like that. Yeah, not the biggest player. Um, so to see if he can get add some size would be would be huge, I think, uh, for him. As we wait for the second round to begin, we got Windsor on the clock again. They are going to select two with Niagara's pick. With Niagara's pick, so this would have been. <clears throat> I have to assume this is from the ride trade. Yep, ride and Sobolev. Yep, from the year before. But then the Ice Dogs were able to get a haul back for Bronson Ride from the trade that they made with the North Bay Battalion, as well as goaltender Charlie Robertson, who we haven't really talked about the yeah, goaltenders, that, that, goaltenders he, as of yet, because Owen Flores is possibly going to be an overager, whether he goes to play at another level, gets signed by a pro team. Uh, Jean-Christophe Lemieux goes in the second round from the Quinty Red name. Devils. He was at the OHL Combine as well, another player that I was told to look out for. So the Windsor Spitfires take uh, Jean-Christophe Lemieux from the Quinty Red Devils with the first pick of the second round. All right, so yeah, I feel like this round is going to be dominated by defensemen. Well, he's another centerman, so right now we're 20 of 22 as we go forward here. But back to the Owen Flores goaltending conversation, if he goes and plays you know, with, with a pro team or what have you, I believe Charlie Robertson proved at the end of the year that he can carry the load of this team as the starting goaltender. They're obviously going to have to go out and get a backup and, and start developing some young goaltenders here. But I think Charlie Robertson getting him in that Bronson ride trade along with the boatload of draft picks that they were able to get, we might look back at that trade and that might be one of the better ice dog trades in the last, uh, you know, I guess since the calendar turned to 2020. I think, I mean, the one that I think that is a clear winner, though, is the Gavin Bryan trade. Yeah. That... You know that that might be one of the better ones that they've done in the last five years. Just uh, for what he brings off the ice, not just your, what he is you got on your the captain, ice. Captain as well yep. as a fifty-point player, um, and I believe they gave up. Uh, that was for um, what the name is Declan Waddick. Declan Waddick. I want to say Wadick. second. Waddick in the second. Exactly, tight Waddick in the second. So um, a huge trade. Like that's a, that's a great one. Um, no, the the Ice Dogs got a second with a. Gavin that's what Bryan. I mean. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like that. That's a crazy trade. Uh, in in hindsight, so uh, you know, after a year of where there was a lot of deals, um, just to try and it, it seemed like after every loss they would make a deal simply to just try and do anything when they were trying to get the Memorial Cup. This year there was definitely a lot more. Um, uh, it, it was a, it was a lot uh, more. Th- I don't want to say thought like there w- there was more more thought to it, but um, they definitely worked out well, and yeah. there was definitely a team building concept in mind there. So as far as the goaltending situation yes. with Charlie Robertson, if Owen Flores does come back or not, we're going to expect that he does. But let's say for this conversation, Owen Flores moves on to pro hockey. Charlie Robertson's your starting goaltender. Are you confident in that? Well, I think the last 10 games made this even a conversation because when he first got here, there was definitely some struggles. But that was also when we were still undermanned and Flores was playing. You know, I think he had a stretch where he played 16 straight games. Um, where I believe they got down to about five points out of the playoffs at one at one spot, um, so it was Flores pretty much every night. But the last like ten games, Robertson was incredible, and he really made it a conversation going into this off season as to you know maybe he is the start, maybe he has the potential to be the starter this year. Um, so you know I, I think 
I personally want to see the team make the playoffs with Flores, uh, simply because he has been the starting goaltender for two of the worst seasons. And I think that it would just be great, kind of a way to send him off with a play, thank with you. a play. Yeah, almost. Yeah, but he definitely deserves uh, deserves a shot. As Patrick Babin goes to Brantford. from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Look at that! There we there go. There you go. Another lo- a local connection here. Only the third def- defenseman taken out of the twenty three picks so far. Twenty of them. Have yeah, been- sorry, J C Lemieux. I was reading. I was reading up on uh, yep. on uh, Cohen beforehand. So. Uh, forward uh, for uh, for Windsor from the Niagara North Stars, Patrick Babin. So hope to talk to him tomorrow. Well, actually, we won't talk to him tomorrow. He's not a nice dog pick, but <laughs> I'm sure yeah, I'm yeah. sure Bill Potras will talk to him from BPSN, uh, playing for the Niagara North Stars. I'm sure he's been able to get a rod local connection there. Yeah, Patrick Babin from the. There you go. Another a great local connection there. Uh, with Niagara Falls native Patrick Babin going 23rd overall to the Brantford Bulldogs. So he's not going too far, at least. It's second closest yeah, team. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Staying it's in the backyard. It's crazy how, like, when you actually look at the distance for OHL teams, that how, like, in the middle Niagara is. Yeah. Because like, well, you would think that, like, like, right, like, you know what I mean, in the middle of, of everything. Yeah. But it's quite a distance when you consider, like, some of the teams that are, like, kind of packed in together. Well, when, when the Bulldogs were in Hamilton, it was a bit easier as well. That's true. Yeah, I think that's really sorely missed. Yeah, I mean, usually when teams come down to play Niagara, they're getting eerie with that. Exactly, Because it just makes yeah. more sense, right? So, um, yeah, Patrick Babin goes 23rd overall. The Ice Dogs will be on the clock in five picks. So I'll make that. F- Carter Hicks goes to the Windsor Spitfires here with their second second-round selection. Right defenseman. So as you mentioned, we're starting to see some D here. Two of the first three in the second round have been uh, defenseman Carter Hicks from the London Junior Knights, another good program. Right defenseman, six foot one. So Windsor continues to add some very talented players to their roster. And like I said, um, in in our in in the kind of scouts rankings in, in terms of what we received. Um, in terms of the write up for for this upcoming draft, and the Ice Hawks picking five picks. There's five players that were projected to go in the first round still available, so the Ice Dogs get a shot at you know a potential first round talent, much like what happened last year. Or Galianov was the one that fell the most. That uh, was kind of just super surprising. Yeah, Adam Hedner said the guy should have been a first round pick. So the fact that they got him in the fourth round uh, was big for them. And even what Arden Frola brought last year, I think with what he was able to do, you could argue that he should have been a late first. So, um, yeah. So the Ice Dogs will pick again here. We're at pick number 25. We're starting to get through it a little bit quicker here than we got in the first round. So thank you to everybody tuning in today on the live stream on YouTube. Make sure to give us some love on there if you're enjoying the content that we're able to bring you through this live coverage of the OHL Draft Weekend for 2024. The Ice Dogs will pick 30th overall with the pick that they received from the Guelph Storm. I'm, I'm not too sure if that was a, a direct trade or if that was somebody else's second that got moved around a little bit. Um, I don't re- recall the Ice Dogs making a, a trade with Guelph where they acquired a second-round pick, so I think that was previously was acquired trade. from somebody previously else. Acquired, yeah. yeah, so when, when you look at it, and I have a quote here from Brady Wasson because this is a guy I talked to at the Combine, so I'm probably going to bring this up to him uh, tomorrow, and, and it's probably going to be funny when I do bring it up to him. Ever since I was a little kid, I looked up to Patrick Kane. I got to skate with him a couple of times, which was amazing. I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. He's such a class act and an amazing, humble guy. So he actually skated the the Ice Dogs' fourth overall pick, Brady Wasslin. He skated with Patrick Kane when Kane was still trying to recover from oh, his. Oh wow! Uh, oh, when he was in, um, he was doing that locally. Yep. Yeah. So he he actually got to skate with Patrick Kane, which he said was an unreal experience for a guy his age, uh, looking up to a guy like Patrick Kane who had a great OHL career and has gone on to have a Hall of Fame uh, NHL career. But that's, uh, that's a cool story that I look forward to talking to him more about tomorrow. No, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. want to hear about that. That was when uh, Kane was linked to the Leafs. Yep. They made a huge thing about that as we've got a new pick yep. uh, for Erie. Lucas Ambrosio. wonder if he's related to the PA announcer of the Mississauga Steelheads, Tony Ambrosio. Showed up to him, but... Oh, you're right. It's Ambrosio, not an Ambrogio. You're right. Come on, Rod. I'm Italian. I should know better. That's Anyways, it. Toronto four, Junior Canadians. Four of the last five picks now have been defensemen. Yeah, four of the first five. You you called it. You said the second round would. I be mean, yeah, like obviously when it's just that barren of of <laughs> picks like that, because you know Rod in our room was has 
At least I don't know if that, that's ever happened before uh, with that few defensemen taken. So um, probably going to see a lot of course correction here in a second. Could we see Niagara take a goalie? I don't – I personally, I think of anywhere that is just, they would, that, that is not needed – Currently, Flores is one of the better goalies in the OHL last year. They're going to need to develop some young goalies. Though. Absolutely, absolutely. But again, I think that that is something when they're later on in their window. Right. Again, it all depends on what Flores does. That's a big question mark. Yeah, if, if he's going to be back if or he not. he is right? not back, that is a massive hole, and you're going into the season with someone <clears throat> in Robertson who proved, I mean, man, he had a he was pitching a shutout in the final home game uh, before he went down with it with an injury, and he was just having such a great run there. Um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. I'd, I'd much rather see a defenseman or another forward, to be honest with you. So, yeah, Nolan Nolan Butter goes but- Butter. I think is his name. <laughs> what a great name! Goes to the Kingston Frontenacs from the Peterborough Peets U uh, sixteen. So an- another forward here. Right. Six foot, one hundred sixty six pounds to the Kingston. The Ice Dogs will be up in three picks. Barry actually picks back to back here. And then North Bay, then Niagara. How did Barry get back to back picks? That's wild. They had a they had a really. Ru- I don't. I mean, they're not even their picks. One's from Owen Sound and one's from Flint. Who are they losing this year? They're losing. Um, who was hurt this year? Um, Bo Aiki. Bo Aiki, yeah, for Edmonton Oilers draft pick, correct? Second round pick. Yeah, and Edward Shala is still on this team. I believe he was hurt for the majority of the year too, because we only saw him once. I believe. I remember Shala. What, yeah, he, yeah. When he was before he was traded the. Kitchener. Yes, correct. Yep. So, I mean, they, yeah, they've got a restock there for sure. So the Ice Dogs will be up in, th- well, they're, they'll be on the clock in three picks. We're going to have the Barry Colts, a Central Division opponent, picking twice, and actually another Central Division opponent picking ahead of them in North Bay. So is Thornton still there? Anson Thornton is no longer. OHL? Yeah. Or o- over. Actually, there? the Ice Dogs acquired his rights. I remember here. that. Yeah. that, was, that was, oh, yeah, correct. That's why the name <laughs> stuck in my head. Yeah, he's not no longer there, but they've got some some good talent as well. They they were kind of at the beginning of their cycle this year too. With it was uh, kind of surprising. I think when Bo Aiki went down, that was when it was like okay, um, because they it was kind of surprising that they had kind of had like a, such a poor start. Yeah, well, you lose a guy like Ethan Cardwell, Sharks pick, shout out to him, and uh, oh, true, and they lost Brant Clark as well, who was top five. Oh pick yeah, Los losing Blank, Kings. Yeah, he was their entire team. I last remember year. Uh, he, last year or the prior season when. It's funny when you see NHL drafted defensemen, um, especially the high drafted players. The entire rush, offensive zone pressure, everything runs through them. Uh, much like what we saw Oliver Bonk in in uh, London as the season went along. Um, but uh, yeah, just uh, absolutely uh, um, crazy when you see that because they they just everything runs through them. And Brent Clark, I remember Brent Clark. I want to say had like fifty shot attempts in one game <laughs> against uh, Niagara two years ago. <laughs> So the Barry Colts did take one of their first two picks here. Ben Bowen, left winger from the Vaughn Kings. That entire team? <laughs> Vaughn Kings? No, yeah. Well, I mean, the entire fir- the entire first line was drafted in the top 10? Or, sorry, top 15? I'm going to start playing the epic music. The Ice Dogs are getting close to the clock here. Barry's up again. Wait, North and there Bay. is still some really high-rated prospects available here. I'm just going to say Niagara's on the clock right now on our live stream here, get people interested here. The, um, we've got, uh, again, I'm just going to read the ones that were, were kind of mocked uh, in terms of being first round And picks. if we do stop talking for a minute, it's because yeah, we're, we're trying to listen yeah. to the draft room. Um, Cole Emerton, defenseman, again, he was kind of projected to go 18th. Um, he's available. Weston Cameron is a forward from uh, Toronto Marlboros. He's still available. Alexander Hage, another forward. Maximus Crete. Great name, um, all projected in the first round uh, in, in the mock draft that we received from the uh, from the league scouts. Um, so um, you know, definitely people in the industry in the know. Um, so that means that there's definitely a first round talent available. So if they go with another forward, when you look at that forward crew. I mean, then well, I, I think I don't think it's a demotion. I think it's putting players in the proper spots where they wouldn't normally. Like uh, Galian Vanzot on the third line. Um, you know, I think on a on a strong playoff team would be great, especially with how well Zada played defensively and, and you know getting better as the season went along. And, and Galliano starting to play with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, um, but definitely has the more offensive flair. I would love to see Galliano and Zada play next year together. Like I, I that, seeing that 
Like, it actually is, is pretty fun. But now we're going to have to wait and see where where um, Wasson plays. I'm, I would have a feeling that Acid Dorian, um, you know, his injury definitely set him back. Uh, we'll see if Potaloo's back or not because he's in a way spot. So like, man, that's a tough spot right there. Potaloo is just a very tough decision there. Noah Gadet Barton goes to Barry. The defenseman. The defenseman from the Oshawa Minor Generals. He was a guy at the Combine. I remember him being there. Uh, so two right. guys back to back from Peter, like hometown from Peterborough. Uh, left or right defenseman Noah Gadet Barton goes to Barry. So Barry takes a left wing and a right D with their two picks. Shout out to former Ice Dog coach Marty Williamson making the picks there in Barry. North Bay is up. They have this pick from the Kingston Frontenacs, and then Niagara will be officially on the clock here. It sounds like there's going to be some first round talent that really slipped through the cracks that's available. Yeah, absolutely. Like I like I mentioned, there's uh, there's definitely some players that were projected to go a little bit higher um, that are still available to them. And um, only one defenseman because we went on a run of defensemen here. But again, I still think we're in a situation where we take best available. And um, that organizational depth is just just needs to be better all around because you saw last absolutely. year with all the call ups and and not really having the full. Full uh, cogged lineup for Ben Boudreaux's lineup card there, especially on forward. You yep. had many guys that were called up, and they they ran games where they only had three lines or only one forward on the fourth line. So you think that just building that organizational depth from top to bottom is just going to help them so much? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I I think that offensively for sure we could use some more some more goal scorers. I'd love to see some guys that just are willing to score ugly goals around the net. I still think that's something that the team misses. Yeah, I think Mason Ray's an X factor. Yeah, too, because I, you know, I he's a former up. second round pick of the Brantford Bulldogs. He's a big body. Saw him start to take a, a couple flashes and a couple step forward in the last ten or twelve games or so. So you really think that Mason Ray, as a former second round pick in this league, a big body guy on the wing, has a good shot. Maybe he takes a step forward next year for Niagara as well. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be awesome. And yeah, definitely noticeable too because he's so big. Niagara, we're still waiting here. We're just kind of trying to listen in here if, if they're going to make their selection. We don't know exactly if this is a little bit delayed here they on the OHL website. Two picks away, but then um, when do they select again? Because they have two second rounders, no? No, they have two third two rounders. Two third rounders, sorry. Yep. So the Ice Dogs will pick again. Well, they'll pick at 30, and then they'll pick at 44 and 56. The, and they don't have either of their own third round picks. They have, Windsor, say, they, have... they have Windsor's third and Brantford's third. I assume that, that one was from the Sobolev or the Lavoie trade? I can't remember exactly. but got to be Lavoie. Um, so Niagara will pick uh, two more times tonight after they do pick here in the second round, 30th overall. And they go. are on the clock now as Kent Greer, a right defenseman, goes to the fr to the North Bay Battalion from the Barry Jr. Colts. So, so the Ice Dogs are on the clock. Again, highest rated players that would be available currently. Uh, Cole Emerton, uh, we got Weston Cameron, Alexander Hage and Maximus Crete would be the ones that were projected in the first round. We'll see if Niagara goes somewhere, somewhere a bit different. We're just going to be listening in here, guys, so, so bear with us. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of a crickets here for the next little bit. this is what happens when you get to a draft you know scouts they like a certain guy and they might uh, be deliberating on that it happens in every single draft room so you have to wait and see how things go as far as you know when guys are, are really adamant they've been watching these guys all year they've been in-depthly looking at at the selection so um, there is going to be some you know back and forth as to making sure that they do take the right guy here History of good second round picks. Absolutely. It's quiet. <laughs>
Oh, let's go. We got the best name in the draft. <laughs> All right. Maximus Crete. Welcome. Maximus Crete. Welcome to the Niagara Ice Dogs. Amazing name. Center, five foot eight, from Ottawa, Ontario, Upper Canada Cyclones. Maximus Crete. If he's any, if he's anywhere close to as good as his name, that's another. So Niagara adds another forward here. So his older brother uh, Gabriel was actually selected 183rd overall in the 2019 OHL draft. Um, in terms of uh, Crete, is an extremely mobile and f is extremely mobile and fluid on his skates. He uses his elite edge work and shiftiness to maneuver around the ice with ease. Crete loves having the puck on his stick and is definitely a play driver, often creating offense for himself and teammates. He's excellent at zone entries, both five on five and especially on the power play, which is a massive need for the Ice Dogs. Crete has a good level of unpredictability to his game as he's often reading and reacting to what his opponents are giving him and does so very effectively. He excels in transition using his explosive stride to create separation while using his hockey sense to capitalize on odd man rushes. Crete projects to be either a first or second line playmaking centerman that may need to start on the wing in his first OHL season. So um, to be honest, like absolutely nails a lot of the a lot of the things that the Ice Dogs need. Fixing the power play is gotta be if not one, it's two in terms of importance going into next season. Absolutely. So he's projected as a center, but again, if he goes to the wing, much like Rubrik did. Absolutely. So I would love to get if we can if we can speak with uh, head coach uh, Ben Bertro. It would be I would love to bring that up. I wonder if you'd say he's yeah. very he's very candid. You know, I wondered if we I wonder if we can get a get a get it out of him if uh, you know unless out of necessity like it was last year. But so Maximus Crete is the Ice Dogs' next selection here, thirtieth overall in the second round. They will pick again coming up here in the third round, which is still a little bit ways away. So I think this is a good time for us to take another break here, and we'll come back. We'll get uh, we'll look at the Ice Dogs draft throughout the years in the third round, and we'll kind of project the lineup here as we continue to go on here. Maximus Crete and Brady Waslin have been the two newest members to the Niagara Ice Dogs roster both forwards added in this draft so far. So stay right here. We'll be right back on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs. Proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods. Their pets are undeniably part of the family. And visit all four of the great Niagara region locations. Brandon Caputo and Cam Halbert will be back with you after a short commercial break here on our OHL Draft live stream live on YouTube. Pets bring immense joy to our homes, becoming an integral part of our families. But this living, loving experience often requires a little extra care and attention. That's where Global Pet Foods comes in, with owners and staff ready to support you every step of the way. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Proud to sponsor the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Wild Bill's Auto Repair is your local center for auto maintenance and repair in the Niagara region. Since 2012, Wild Bill's Auto Repair and Body Shop has been helping customers stay safe and confident on the road, knowing their vehicles in top running condition through their services. Located at 7868 Oakwood Drive in Niagara Falls, the garage started as a tribute to the owner's father, William Robert Hunter, who passed away, continuing the same community spirit and high level of service which customers came to expect from him back at Hunter's Auto Repair. Their multi-award winning auto shop has earned the trust of the Niagara community with its fair treatment of all customers who can feel confident they'll get the trustworthy advice and repairs during their visit. Their experienced crew loves meeting new people and looks forward to forming a lasting partnership for the care of your cars. To find out more or to book a service, contact them today. 905-358-7868 or wildbillsauto.ca. Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. Niagara Golf Lounge features two state-of-the-art indoor golf simulators allowing you to play some of the world's best courses all year round. The perfect place to indulge all season long. Don't worry about getting thirsty while you play around with your friends. Their fully stocked bar offers a wide selection of drinks, appetizers, and a variety of meals are also available to enjoy before, during, or after you play. 
Grab a seat next to the fire in their comfortable sports lounge. Didn't bring your clubs? No problem. They have partnered with TaylorMade to offer you the best rental clubs. You won't want to miss their exclusive NFL and NHL giveaways for the Buffalo Sabres and Buffalo Bills. Located in the Best Western Plus Cairncroft Hotel, 6400 Lundy's Lane in Niagara Falls. Visit NiagaraGolfVacations.com to learn more and to reserve your golf bay today. The Niagara Golf Lounge, Niagara's home for golf and sport all year round. Are you looking to hire? Let the Niagara Employment Help Center save you valuable time and money by making your hiring process easier. Their services include free job postings in-house and on their website. Fill job vacancies quickly and efficiently. Access to a bank of potential employees, reduce employment costs, and financial incentives may be available to offset the cost of new hire training. Check out the website at ehc.on.ca or call 905-358-0021 for more information. The Niagara Employment Help Center, helping people find work since 1983. In the Niagara region, Global Pet Foods is your destination for premium pet nutrition and caring expertise. Whether you've welcomed a new furry family member or need advice on top quality nutrition, their dedicated staff is ready to help. Discover why Global Pet Foods' lesser-known premium brands outshine the big corporate names. Their team's passion ensures your pet's health and vitality. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. Global Pet Foods, where premium brands and caring staff make the difference. JNL Flooring is Niagara's specialty flooring and design company. They take great pride and provide elite customer service and support. With a beautiful showroom, great pricing, and a wide variety of truly unique products, JNL Flooring is your specialty flooring and decor boutique shop. All of their products are environmentally friendly and responsibly produced so you can feel good about your flooring choices. Their goal is to build authentic relationships based on honesty and integrity that they foster with respect and authenticity. Offering a unique and wide range of quality products presented by a knowledgeable and patient team, they simplify the process to make your life easier and to make your home more beautiful. Visit them at 4424 Montrose Road in Niagara Falls or find out more at jnlflooring.com. If you think you can get a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack at JNL Flooring. Since 1999, Niagara Dental Clinic has been helping thousands of patients achieve natural-looking smiles with the confidence to show them off. Sean Battelle and his wife Anne, both licensed denturists, bring a wealth of skill and experience to the warm and friendly atmosphere to their Niagara Falls location at 5501 Drummond Road. And their on-site Niagara Hearing Clinic offers free hearing tests and a variety of services to fit your needs. This family-run practice takes pride in providing superior care and service to their patients, along with the best premium products available on the market. Get the best work done at a more reasonable price. Niagara Dental Clinic is here to help. Protect your teeth with a mouth guard, replace missing teeth, and get better hold with your dental implants. Call them today for a free consultation at 905-353-1552 or check them out online at NiagaraDentureClinic.com. Niagara Dental Clinic creating natural smiles in the Niagara region for 25 years. Are you currently looking for work in the Niagara region? If so, you owe it to yourself to check out the services provided by the Niagara Employment Help Center located at 6100 Thoroughstone Road in Niagara Falls. Their many free services include a fully staffed resource area open to the public, resume and cover letter writing, local labor market information, job search strategies, assistance with clarifying employment, training and career goals, employment counseling and job search support, Better Jobs Ontario information and registration assistance, and you can check out their website at ehc.on.ca or call 905-358-0021 for more information. The Niagara Employment Help Center, helping people find work since 1983. This is Kevin Heath. This is Ethan Zadier. It's Owen Floyd. You're listening to the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Welcome back to our OHL Draft live stream. 
right here on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs, proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family in all four of their great Niagara region locations. Brennan Capito and Cam Halbert are with you on site for the Niagara Ice Dogs 2024 OHL Priority Selection Draft. Rounds one to three tonight taking place. And then tomorrow morning, we'll be back with you for more coverage. Uh, we'll get the player interviews as well from rounds four through 15. So thank you to those today watching us on the YouTube live version. Give us some love if you're enjoying the content so far. So with that said, Cam, the Ice Dogs have picked twice so far. We're still in the end of the second round here. A couple picks still to go. But the Ice Dogs were able to select Brady Waslin fourth overall in the first round. And then Maximus Crete one of the best names in the uh, Ontario Hockey League draft, but obviously a solid player as well, going 30th overall in the second round to the Niagara Ice Dogs. Two forwards taken so far, two third-rounders still to come. No, absolutely. And we're getting two uh, dynamic playmakers here as well that uh, that are probably going to draw, jump right into the lineup next year, uh, much like we saw with uh, Zada and Rubrik this past season. Uh, so getting uh, two two forwards that uh, can help it a little more offensively because that is something that we sorely needed for sure. And, yeah, when you look at it, the we're at pick number 33. The Ice Dogs will pick again coming up here. 44, I believe. Got it right there. Yeah, 44, 44. and then 56. 44 and 56, two and third rounders still to come tonight for the Niagara Ice Dogs, and we'll see if we can get some live reaction uh, tonight. If not, we're going to have lots of guests lined up for tomorrow's show. We go through the years here of, we might as well get to the third round because the Ice Dogs will pick in the third round. Got so much prep here, I can't even find it. Former third round picks of the Ice Dogs. Hayden Reed last year, and that's the remains still to be seen about that. No third rounder the year before that. Apologies, had to sneeze there. Another third rounder was Andrew Wysick in 2021. That turned out all right. That turned out pretty good, eh? Uh, Dylan Rubrick, third round oh. pick back in 2020, the older brother of an overager this season or this past season. I believe he was an overager this year with the Oshawa Generals, Generals. Yep. having a great year for them. Mm. I wanted to bring up uh, Cameron Butler made his NHL debut with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He did. He was called up former after captain. A captain? captain, yeah, <laughs> uh, for a short time there before he was traded to the Oshawa Generals. He was the piece that came back in the Akil Thomas trade. Oh, so the Ice Dogs picked up Cameron Butler and I believe a second round pick uh, for Akil Thomas, who was an overager that year, uh, scoring the golden goal for Team Gold Canada. Gold so Team Canada. Other third round picks of note back in the day here, as we continue to look through. Mark Visentine. That's um, a big one. Where did you see that? Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Yeah, you're right. Mark Visentine, two thousand eight third rounder. Andrew Fritch. Yeah, I believe he's the well, he had the record or he was a was he one of the higher scoring rookies? We had this no. whole debate when we were, I thought we I could have sworn. No, that. Fritch wasn't. But Andrew Fritch, um, I guess now former employee of the Ice Dogs, now that he's with the Pittsburgh Penguins. We still see him around. Oh, the that's ring. where his name yeah, his name escaped me. But yeah, Andrew Fritch was a former third round pick of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Continue on here to look at former third rounders. A lot of drafts are these. Graham Knott. Graham Knott, another good one. Oh, S Stephen Dillon. A lot of def or a lot of good goaltenders the Ice Dogs take. Yeah, maybe this will be the next installment yeah. to the Ice Dogs goaltenders who here. Who is the highest? Let me take a look and see. Again, just kind of projected-wise, who would be the highest if there is a goaltender mentioned among, uh, you know, in, in the high rounds of the draft. I didn't see any in the first round, obviously. No goalies taken yet, correct. Yeah, Rod Mahood's with us here in the background. From the Niagara Sports Report, PA announcer for the Niagara Ice Dogs. Rod, I got to hear a really good Kevin He next year. Opening night, I better hear the loudest Kevin He introduction I've ever heard when he gets drafted to the NHL this year. A Maximus. Yes. You got to you gotta work on that cadence, this Maximus go, Creed. So, yes. Anyways, moving on here, We as Cam continues to look at that. Ice Dogs players drafted to the NHL over the years, and this is, uh, again, what we just talked about, Kevin He. Going to get through that, Blake Gowan was taken by the Peterborough Peets. I don't know why Flint's taking so long. Maybe they took a timeout. Not too sure there. Phil Tomasino was the last Ice Dog pick, 2019. Keel Thomas, 2018. Kirill Maximov, 2017. Ben Jones, 2017. All four of those guys have played games in the National Hockey League. And Akil Thomas, shout out to him, by the way, just 
scored his first NHL Damn. goal last week. Sharks. Yeah, well, no, he scored a goal bef- before against. Was it? Oh, it, no, it was against the Sharks. Yeah, you're right. So it was against the San Jose Sharks. But again, if I, I if there was a player I wanted to score against the Sharks, it'd be Ke- it'd be Akil Thomas. That was that was a really special moment to see him finally break through because that was a guy that was injured last year, coming off a you know like a career where you saw his trajectory start to continue to climb, and then he kind of hit a roadblock. We wondered if Akil Thomas was end up gonna make it to the NHL, and he grinded, got got a one-year extension with the Ontario Reign. Yep. They brought him back, and he worked his butt off to get back to this point, got called up to the NHL, and just a, a really cool thing to see him excelling now. The LA Kings for a while were a team that really were a factory for, for the OHL uh, coming up in, into the NHL with, with guys like Quentin Byfield and, and Akil Thomas, just to name a few. They've got a couple other solid uh, former Doughty OHLers. Was an OHLer, no? Yeah, Doughty was... But, Long time ago. Oh yeah, obviously. Knights. Yeah, long time. But um, just great to see a kill Thomas. He's all he's scored two goals now in the NHL, made his NHL debut. Three. He got one last night, so he's on fire. He scored three in his first four games here for the Los Angeles Kings. So it's crazy that. Well, first of all, it's crazy that 2019 was five years ago. <laughs> like that actually, that is actually kind of stunning to see. But the fact that you know just. Unfortunately, at the end of that run, obviously the Roberts and whatnot, but having a Tom, having Thomas and Tom, or having Akil Thomas and and Thomasino on the same team, we had just like a, we were just like blessed, you know, those years. Yeah, Xavier Tessier goes to the Flint Firebirds from the Ottawa Myers Automotive. What a team name! So another forward. Uh, I'm actually uh, good friends with uh, with Kevin. He's skating coach uh, over the years. I've, I've just talked to him, and he just DM'd me saying, "I think Crete is actually a very good pick for where you got him." Uh, watched him in the OHL Cup. He was uh, he was on top of he was one of the top Ottawa kids. Very speedy, gritty. Watched him finish all his checks. Led the Ottawa League in scoring. Captain of his team. So uh, something to keep in mind there that we might have gotten another uh, a strong start to this draft, and uh, hopefully we can conclude it with another couple of good third round picks uh, in the uh, in the upcoming round. I believe we're what. Uh, Seven away? Ten, ten, ten away now? Sorry, ten away. Shout out to Colin Ward from the Dogcast. Uh, Ryan or Dylan Roberg will be an OA next year. He will oh. be an OA. Okay, yep. that's what I thought. I thought he had one more year left. Colin Ward will join us tomorrow. Also covers the Ontario Hockey League OHL and 60 podcast. He'll join us tomorrow for day two. We do have a lot of guests lined up for day two to get you guys through rounds four through 15. Of the Ontario Hockey League draft, 15 rounds, by the way. It's, what is your thoughts stunning, on that? It's stunning to me, uh, again, it's the first year of doing it, like, you know, having and being part of the coverage of it, just because, you know, it's very hard to make the OHL, and getting drafted is an accomplishment in itself. But, you know, if you go and take a look, even for the Ice Dogs team that has been, you know, in the, in the midst of a rebuild um, over the last few years, they've, you know, they've so that, meaning that they would have more open spots for players to, to compete in. You know, you really don't see many players after the sixth round really, you know, um, play, you know, 50, 50 games in the OHL, 100 games in the OHL. So that just goes to show how last year's draft class, because Galliano was great. Um, so still players that can be impactful coming up, um, you know, very, very shortly. Uh, and, and we'll see. Not to mention, there's more than likely a lot of players that commit, um, you know, playing the BCHL or, or go to the college route. Um, that maybe get drafted later in the OHL. Um, they probably probably a lot of um, uh, risks in that sense because it's later on picks. But uh, so still some some impactful picks like like you just mentioned when you went through the Andrew Vermeulen uh, was a good player for us, a fourth round pick, uh, and then you know Wadek as well and Wysik in the uh, in the twenty twenty one draft. So uh, hopefully uh, we have another uh, couple of picks here. There's still some surprising. Players that have not been taken. Go back to the uh, draft list for me, real quick. Sure. Uh, just taking a look here because, um, yeah. Like so, again, not an end all be all thing, but anyways, just the, the 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 mock draft that was done by all of the the league scouts. Where there still is um, on the on the uh, availability, Cole Emerton uh, from the Vaughn Kings, um, Weston Cameron from the Toronto Marlboros. Is still available. Alexander Hage as well from the Vaughn Kings, um, and then then we get into the honorable mentions. So there's still some bigger names, you know, that were projected to go higher in the OHL draft by um, some, you know, well, well, uh, well educated pl- people when it comes to the, the scouting for this league. I'm seeing some positive buzz about Maximus Crete, not just about his name, but about this player. I mean, Colin Ward 
um, just told me that it's similar to Gavin Bryant's playing style. So that's I mean, what that's what that's that, what uh, my good friend Rich uh, just told me as well. Finished all of his checks. Yeah, like so to, if they get a, a guy like a Gavin Bryant in this late second round or mid second round, that's a that's a heck of a player to be able to add to your roster. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't just uh, it, Wazi, uh, uh Brady. I knew would be an ice dog once uh, you guys got the fourth pick. Uh, so uh, again, uh, I, I, again, I mentioned um, just speaking. maybe it wasn't all bad falling to four. No, I mean like well, <laughs> two wasn't either. You know, not again. We we talked about that last year that uh, Matthew Shaver probably going to be a first round pick in the upcoming draft. Not this draft, the one following. Um, or no, sorry. Yeah, next draft. He's a twenty twenty five. Projected first round pick, yes. Um, so not like they they missed or anything like that. Uh, but Rubric uh, potentially, you know, has the chance to go top ten in the following year. Um, but uh, yeah, speaking with uh, with my good friend Stephen Ellis uh, for the Daily Faceoff, yeah, he he said I I texted I texted him right when it happened. And said Landon Waslin. He goes, holy, that's nuts. <laughs> so again, one of the more edu- one of the most educated players when it comes to uh, prospects and and covering the game of hockey around the world. Um, that just goes to show that we, you know, looks like we landed a good one. Absolutely. So we're still here in the second round. We've got, I believe, eight picks to go in the second round. Guelph is up at the moment. And the Ice Dogs will have two third-round picks yet to go. Has there been a defenseman taken after our pick? Niagara picked at 30. There was two defensemen taken, Alexander Balecki and Blake Blake Gowan. Two defensemen taken after... Maximus Crete at 30th overall to Niagara. Let's take a look at Maximus Crete real, real quick while we have some free time here. Thank you, those sticking with us through all three rounds a tonight. Of, really a lot of mentions it. of of his uh, ability on the power play as well. I mean, we talked about this uh, lacking a, a true, you know, hard shot from the point. I think that's still an area that needs to be addressed. But we also did not just score around the net very well. It was always um, you know, snipes up top or looking for a screenshot. So, uh, getting a player that you know of of that same ilk as uh, as Gavin Bryant, the the ability to try and score from the dirty areas is something that's sorely needed uh, for the Ice Dogs team. And I think that you know just the power play percentage going from ten percent to you know fifteen percent would be a massive bump in offense uh, over the course of a season. And you think back to how many games where they just did not win the special teams battle and they lost by one. Um, that's where a lot of those wins are going to start piling up, I think. 66 points in 29 games for Maximus Crete for the Upper Canada Cyclones U16 AAA team. I believe he was the captain as well. Yes, he was the captain. In four playoff games, two points. So 49 penalty minutes in 29 games. Again, that's what was kind of mentioned to to us, uh, that he finished every single check of his. and um, That's always something, you know, regardless, because... You know, you, you you never know if offense is going to translate in AAA all the way to junior. There's a big jump in terms of trying to score on on OHL goaltenders, um, but the physicality that you know that it, the way that you play uh, that that's useful, you know, as you know to any to any team. Looking at his career highlights here, most points in the league in 23-24, yep, most so. goals, most assists, as you mentioned, the, and the, the player league. of the year as well. So. In the H E O projected first round again was projected uh, to go in the first round here. So uh, he led the league in point. He led the, he's led the league in goals the last three years. He's led the league in points and goals the last two years. It's not bad, but again, it's another level when you get to the Ontario Hockey League. But you would hope that maybe a little bit of that would translate, and then all the other stuff that you mentioned that he's hopefully going to bring if he's a Gavin Bryant type of player in the way that he plays. That's going to be big for Niagara because they just need to be harder to play against. They have some players that are hard to play against, but having four full lines that will go out there and bang and be be difficult for yeah. Ben Boudreau. You have to back check in, in Ben Boudreau's oh, system. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, and he loves seeing the, the, the physicality from his players. He loves to see them lure their emotions on their sleeve and really get after it. And we've seen it with a few teams this year, especially the Brantford Bulldogs and the Oshawa Generals, the Sudbury Wolves. Like These are teams that are are very physical, and they can kind of get under your skin. So the Ice Dogs have to be able to fight back against some of those teams that like to play a heavier style and like to, especially we saw a team like Kingston that just really cycled them down low and really had a hard time being able to adjust to those teams. So, Who do you think was their toughest opponent? 
Toughest opponent. Like, the, well, I mean, obviously, Brant, I guess Brantford, because they just, for whatever reason, can't get it done. I think, I don't know if there was one that I can I can really point out. They played London early in the year, so I think that they kind of got, got yeah, away with it. Count. So, again. And they played them well. Yeah. Like, that wasn't, you know, that was. Uh, they again, struggled the, against Sudbury mightily. That was a team they really yeah, struggled against. Yeah, that first line kind of, I mean, they, that first line ate up the whole league. Yeah, so Maybe again, that's another first lines in the league. So. What, what do you when you look at the central division as we continue to look through here? Uh, we've got some, some picks, picks. Got some picks. Ethan Dean from the London Junior Knights, who was at the OHL Combine. Carter Stevens to Guelph from the Ottawa Valley Titans. So four centers in a row here go. But when you look at the central division next year, Cam, you, you'd be you'd almost have to think that North Bay is going to be selling because they doubled down this year. There's going to be had an opportunity. You me all messed up with the Ty Nelson. <laughs> so <laughs> no, no, I'm not I'm even trying like to bring for... them really up yeah. here, but you think that they're going to be in a rebuilding state. You look at Sudbury, do they take another kick at the can with what the, the big players that they have? They well, might they might try to go for it one more year. We'll see. I would hazard a guess they're probably going to lose Quentin Musty. Um, just, I hope he makes the Sharks just so that's that. So, yeah, <laughs> like he would, would he be able to, he would he be able to report to the OHL or the AHL? He'd be he has to be a certain year. age. It depends on his on his date of birth. I don't think he's old enough, but he regardless, Gavin Betts goes to Kingston. Nice name there, Mississauga Rebels goaltender. Hey, we got our first goalie. Got our first goalie, Gavin Kingston. Betts, Mississauga Rebels U sixteen. He's five foot eleven. So Mississauga Rebels goaltender. They're still like the second highest rated, or sorry, third high, highest rated defenseman. That again in this initial mock draft put together by by the collection of scouts in the OHL. Um, so 37th, we got our first goaltender. You know, we'll see. But then you look at the rest of the Central Division, Sudbury, North Bay, Barry, they're kind of still trying to figure out what they are. They're a young team. So you think Niagara could possibly make a charge at the Barry Colts. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the fifth team of the Central Division. Say that one more time. So say, say Niagara, one. North Bay, Sudbury, Barry, and I'm missing one more team. Mm-hmm. Mississauga. Mississauga, yeah. The Steelheads, I think, oh, next year's they their were, year. That yeah. was, and you know what? That was, it's funny because that's the team that was the most frustrating because they lost every game by one goal. And <laughs> Landers. Every, yeah, it, it was. It was like they could not score, especially early on in the year. Um, and it's not like they got smoked by them. Like there was nope. games where it was like two nothing, two one. Like it was just so frustrating. Um, that was probably your, you know. And this is the last time we're going to be able to call them Mississauga. Moving to Bram- Brampton next season, so the Brampton Steelheads. I got, I got to be honest with you, Ge- geographically, <laughs> they're like four minutes away. You could basically throw a football yeah. from Mississauga to. to yeah, I didn't to realize that was the the proximity. Of the arena was there, so Brooks Rogowski. To the Missis to the Oshawa Generals, Michigan six foot four, six foot four center from Brighton, Michigan, Detroit Catholic Central High School Shamrocks. What a team name! So our first is that our first American-born player taken. There is a player that is again projected to go a little bit higher. Yeah, so here, that, that's still available. that's the first American taken at thirty-eight. Brooks Rogowski, and he's from Pure Michigan, the state of Michigan, Brighton, Detroit Catholic. Goes to Oshawa at 38. The Ice Dogs will pick again at 44, so we're getting close here. They have the second pick in the third round. So London, Sioux, Flint, and Owen Sound still to go here in the second round. For those uh, still listening to us uh, on the live stream, the Ice Dogs still have two picks remaining tonight at in the third round. I can't remember the exact numbers. Of them. Again, the scouting staffs are obviously going to have just – Far and away different, you know, rankings in, in terms of the players because they followed them all year round. But they're too clearly here that just again reading about them that would fit perfectly. So we'll wait and see as we're getting into that range. We're about to uh, maybe about to have a couple picks in succession here. Yeah, the Niagara Ice Dogs, forty-four and fifty-six, are the positions they will pick in to round up the day one of the twenty twenty-four OHL draft. It's a busy one for Niagara, just like last year. Last year was quite the draft for for Niagara with the two firsts, the compensatory first. Then they had the second where they took Frolov. Then the third where they took Hayden Reed. And so Galianov didn't even get picked till day two 
Mm. And he ended up being a full-time roster player on this team in 23-24, which is incredible to think about because, as you mentioned in the game recaps all year long, he was in the press box for the first month and a half of the season. And he didn't really start to get an opportunity to really showcase himself. But when he d- got in there, I feel like Galianov, along with Gavin Bryant, were he... really like the heart and soul of the team. Ga- Galianov really brought that spunk and that juice that the rest of the team really needed at some point. He quickly passes Zada in scoring. Like, because Zada had such a slow start. Like, I want to say he had like nine points in 15 games when he first started. So, um, yeah, it was, he just kind of started out hot there. Uh, but no, definitely someone that as he got a lot, him and Frola both got a, both got a lot more physical, um, as the game, as the season went. I don't know what happened with Frola. I don't know if that was a coaching, you know, ever since that, uh, when he got into that scrap with, um, uh, uh, Zidlicky. Or Zidlicky, sorry. Yep. The son of Merrick Zidlicky. Exactly. That was, uh, you know, ever since that, um, he was awfully in your face. Uh, something that we didn't see an awful lot at all throughout uh, throughout the rest of the year. So, let's well, before Niagara gets on the clock here, and we get to the current draft picks. As we see, Caleb Mitchell taken by the London Knights from the Peterborough PTU sixteen left defenseman. So with no, because Rubric is a uh, is next year's draft eligible in the NHL. We won't have any players in their draft year, correct? Well. Ethan oh, Zada. Zada, those, sorry, Zada and yeah, Galianov. Zada forgetting. and Galianov would be draft eligible this year, and who knows, if they both take big steps forward and the team Zada takes big steps forward. Team Canada under 17s. Who knows? So, I mean, that's... If Niagara starts to get more spotlight on them as they continue to build up into a better also, team, scouts will be in the building watching guys like Kevin and Robrick, but if other guys can kind of catch scouts' eyes while they're here watching those players, I think you even brought that up, that they might even catch the eye of somebody else. Well, that's that, how it goes, right? Like, exactly. That's how, I mean, just famously following the Sharks for the last 20 years, Doug Wilson historically took Ottawa 67 players, like Logan Couture. Um, the, you find it, the most famous is, is uh, Kyle Dubas and, and the Sioux Greyhounds. Um, but yeah, like at, we, how many times we saw Dubas in person here um, when he came to see um, Cooper Foster with Cooper, the Ottawa 67. Exa- with the 67. So the scouts will come and watch, you know, whether it's playing against them or, yeah, yeah, I I can just see if if you know if everything goes and and there's no you know knock on wood nothing that goes wrong in the development of Rubric like he's a projected top ten pick in the NHL draft currently for twenty twenty six so like that's that's a huge deal. Callum Crossgree he from is. the Oakville Rangers and that team with Ethan Belches that won the OHL Cup goes 40th to the Sioux Greyhounds. He is committed to go to the Chicago Steel of the USHL. So okay. we'll see if that's a situation where Sue is able to uh, you know, him back. convince him to come back. But, um, yeah. Well, I guess we might as well talk about that real quick, is just the generality of these players choosing the USHL and the BCHL. I know some guys do it because they want to go the NCAA route, and the BCHL is a, is a good pipeline for them to a good stepping stone for them to get to the NCAA, but as you could start to see more of these Ontario-based players start to go to the to the United States or go out west, is that a little bit concerning when you look at the uh, future drafts to come? Because this draft really had a, a I'd probably say four or five first-round picks that decided to go elsewhere. I'll be honest with you, I think the USA the USA program of hockey in general has never been as good as it currently is. Like if you look at high level here, if you look at Team USA's projected world championship roster, it might be the first time that Canada would be an underdog. But either, even Canadians that are that, playing there. But no, but what I was going to go, where, where I was going to go with that, in the draft, or the, the COVID draft specifically put a big highlight on this because they were able to play, or a majority of them were able to play. I believe it was the Owen Power draft where there was a record number of first-round picks of American-born players. Yep. And now you're seeing where there was just, you, know, you go back 15 years, and there was maybe five. Right, it was surprising to see you know uh, U.S. USA hockey players played there or players that played in um, in, in collegiate hockey. But now you're seeing you know um, you always assume that the the best you know the best developmental system in, in in the world of hockey is still the CHL and more specifically the OHL, just based on um, alumni. But now you're starting to see where um, you know uh, the collegiate route is really having its uh, the light shined on them. I mean, right now, I mean. With, uh, with the national championship and like that, like Will Smith has made a name for himself, and he was fourth overall in last year's draft in a 
when the three biggest names went off before him that, you know, including Connor Bedard, who was a generational talent. I even look at a guy like Adam Fantilli sticks out to me. He's yeah? a guy drafted in the OHL, went to the USHL, I believe. The like Canadian's going to go first overall this year. Yep. And he plays in Boston College. So And, yeah, Celebrini. Yeah. Plays, like, like you said, plays for a, a, a collegiate team. BC or team. BU, I always mix them up. I always mix up uh, BU. He plays for BU, yeah. I always mix up BC and BU. Yes, just won the Hobie. Tonight? Yeah, well, that was no surprise. He absolutely dominated. He won the Hobie Baker tonight. So. Shout out to Rod Mahood giving us that info. Yeah, look at that. Info. We have, we, we've got, we've got <laughs> a great resource behind us. But, uh, no, I think that you're, you're on to something here. But even more is, like I said, it was – if you wanted a shot at the pro level, so you're talking specifically the high end, like yep. you know the players that you know were were going to go in the first round of the OHL draft, they have a shot to go in the you know it, they can go play the U.S. and it's no longer a foregone conclusion that they're not going to be seen as potential pro picks, right? Like the U.S. program is now pumping out so many first round talent that there's, I would have to assume, far more scouts now covering that program than you know than it was 10, 15 years ago. So. Um, you know, and also, I feel like the fallback too. So, if you're first round pick in the OHL, there's no guarantee that you're going to get, you know, you're going to play pro. You know, it's a very hard league, right? And if it doesn't work out, you know, you've got to think about your future. You know, you're already in college in the U.S., right? Like you're getting an education, and everything like that. No, you're not that you're not getting an education when you play in the OHL, but just something another another aspect of it, I think. That plays and into it. Just thoughts on the WHL getting their second ever exceptional status player. First was Connor Bedard. Dude, it is four. Okay, so when I was watched a few clips of him, Landon, um, or uh, Rod, <laughs> it's Landon's. I can't, I don't want to say Landon is his last name. Oh, it's gonna. I thought. I thought. I. I don't know why the. Well, that's my son's name, but I. That name is stuck in my head for some reason. I want to say his first name was Ethan. Landon, Landon Dupont. Dupont. Okay, I was right. All right, I was right there. Landon Dupont. Yeah, here's he's the list 14. right here. He's 14. Like, he is, he is 14. And, like, uh, playing defense is just, uh, especially the WHL, because that's just a, a big league. Yeah, like a notoriously heavy-hitting league. And only the second time they've had an exceptional status player, Connor Bedard was the first. So before 2020, they the WHL had never had an exceptional status player. I mean, if you look at the list, too. I forgot. I was listening to... Uh, uh, Kipper and Bourne, they were talking about Sean Day and forgetting that the he Mississauga was... Mississauga Steelheads. Yeah, forgetting that. He, if you are an exceptional status player, you are going to see the NHL. Like, if, sorry, and, and you have knock on wood. he was drafted wood. later. He, I believe he was a third-round yeah, pick. Islander? No, Tampa Bay, I believe. Or he ended up playing for Tampa Bay, but I, he was drafted by... You sure it's not the Islanders? I think it was the Rangers. You're, no, it was, it was the New York Rangers. Okay. Yep. So, the Ice Dogs are up in two picks here. Mason Roy went and Rylan Cunningham. Hey, I'll be honest with you. There's still a projected couple of projected first round players that have not been selected that are not collegiate, you know, um, committees. Yeah. So, you know what? Um, you know, speaking on that, obviously it's a pretty big elephant in the room when, when you have um, players that commit to to playing in, in the collegiate route, obviously. But I think that's what we're talking about when he talk about reestablishing the the franchise and the prestige of it um because i i guarantee you you go back you know 10 years and you've got dougie hamilton and, and petra angelo as a you know, you know players that are you know on your squad you know, they play together but like you know then you're more more than likely willing to uh to uh commit like you know what i mean yep. whereas Obviously, off ice things and, and you know the the, the tough few years uh, for Niagara changes, things like that. Exactly, like you're more than likely not super thrilled about that, especially when you're of the caliber of player that's going to get all the looks that, that you want. Um, so uh, it's something that uh, that hopefully this uh, core of players can uh, slowly fix. And, uh, they did a great job so far. Ty in the chat says Ra uh, Rangers, so yeah. it was the Rangers. Yep. At least I was right in this right state. The Ice Dogs are still not on the clock. We're waiting for the Guelph Storm, and then Niagara will pick 44th overall here. That exceptional status list, I mean, when you look at it, John Tavares started it all. Aaron Ekblad. First overall. Connor McDavid. First overall. He's pretty good. Sean Day. And, and then Joe Volano, another kind of under-the-radar guy. He was a uh, He was a late first-round pick, no, for Detroit? Yep, from the St. John Sea Dogs, I believe. That was the QMJHL. And you've got a fourth overall pick in Shane Wright. 
who first. could have been first. He was first all year. I got to then... meet him on a draft day weekend. How was that? You could tell his. I I don't know if there's a player more impacted by COVID in the junior in junior than than Shane Wright. He, um, just you know the the uncertainty of how that shook out, and you know them shutting down the season and then not playing the following year. He didn't go overseas. Like he he really didn't play. Um. So and then and then obviously what happened the last couple of years where where he, was, he wasn't able to be sent down. They tried to get him to you know, it, but um. You could tell he wanted to be first overall because he just wanted to be um, not so much a bravado, but like uh, hold the chip on his shoulder. I'll never forget. I was at the draft, and I'll never forget. There's a, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but he stared down the Montreal Canadiens uh, draft table when he got picked and walked up on stage. It looks like got uh, action going on in the draft room. Oh, Wasslin is speaking. Okay, yep, yep. Brady Wasslin is speaking right now at OHL headquarters uh, on the CHL TV live stream. So, again, just going by, you know, based on, on our mock draft that we've got, Cole Emerton, the defenseman, still available. That was projected first round. Uh, Weston Cameron, um, a forward that, uh, that that is still available. And Alexander Hage, um I don't know if he's committed. That's the thing. That is funny in the mock draft. I had him going to London, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> um, that that's why I, I, you know, so it doesn't look. He wouldn't be an option, I don't think. But Weston and Weston Cameron and Cole Emerton were two players that were, you know, projected to go in the first round um, that we might be able to get in the third. You know, so uh, best available. You know, I, I have total faith in the in the Ice Dogs uh, scouting department after last year, and Kevin He being a second round pick. I would love to see a redraft of that, like what that what that. Well, draft Kevin was. would have been a first round pick, but he hurt his shoulder in his draft year. God, what a mistake for the other teams. But it was a blessing for Niagara. Oh yeah, absolutely. Did we have our? Oh, never mind. That was man. <laughs> uh, that draft class. And Guelph is still on the clock. I don't know if they've taken a timeout here. This is actually Niagara's pick that Guelph has. So. I feel like Niagara hasn't had used their own pick other than their first round pick so far with their second and their and like like I said that there's so many trades in the OHL like there's so many when you think about like you know facilitating players that are overagers and sending them to playoff teams to, to get a last run or um, and, you know things like that but they did a great job compared to the prior year prior year they were clearly chasing um, thinking of players like Zito feel, Zito feels like. Like, yeah, like three, uh, three five years, years ago. ago, man. Yeah. Squally Zito was one of my favorite players to watch, and we only had him for 30 games, 40 games. Yeah, it wasn't even that, but that was in that year where a lot of things happened for the Niagara Ice Dogs. But yeah. Mason Roy, or Wah, wow, I'm not sure. That would have been Mason Ray, and, and Roy <laughs> would have been an awful way to call, having to, having to call yeah. that. Yeah, good luck on that one, Rod, if he would have been a Niagara Ice Dog, but yeah, he's not. He up. goes to the own sound attack. From the Halton Hurricanes. It's funny when you see Gavin Bryant's going to join us after the Ice Dogs pick here in the third round. So the Ice Dogs captain will join us uh, here live from the OHL draft. Uh, we'll be excited to listen to Gavin Bryant. But it's funny when you see some of these teams with the, the high-end players and then you wait and see uh, that when their teammates get taken because they have such a spotlight on them that that well, that's how we saw in the first round. With the Oakville Rangers being the OHL Cup champions, Belchez being the first overall pick. Uh, Hen uh, his line mate was. Both of them went in the top ten, I believe, or top fifteen. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to read through a million names here. Um, <laughs> Niagara is still yet to be on the clock. I don't know what the Guelph Storm are doing. Well, how this long deck. is it? How long uh, when you get to this stage? I believe it's two two minutes. For a five? Yeah. Oh, uh, breaking news in the NHL. Uh, the Coyotes have been informed that relocation to Salt Lake is real. There you it's go. It's happening next season, it looks like. Well, the Arizona Coyotes experiment is done for now, but who knows? They might be getting the team back in a couple of years. They've got five years, from my understanding. They've got five. The the current owner, Alex Mulroney, Mul I think I'm getting that name wrong. Um, he's got five years 
uh, as a part of a deal to, to try and bring a, an expansion team back. So, Yeah. That's all dependent on getting a new arena. <laughs> Speaking Still of arenas, like we have, like, that is, like, one selling point that I feel like a lot of players don't. That, yeah. that isn't talked I mean, about with, enough. With, the Meridian with, Center is just... When it's sold out for a playoff game, is there anything better, Rod, than a sold out Meridian Center playoff game? It is loud, and... We're getting back there. That's a fact. Next season... Oh, man, I'm just... So, I'm, I was a nervous wreck in the first, <laughs> you know, 30 games. I'm still... My first year of, of, of jumping on and joining you doing the, the Dog Pound podcast, but uh, the, the fan in me still bleeds out a little bit every once in a while, and, it, God, it was... I want to see that as it looks like we are on the clock. Ice Dogs are on the clock. Eric Frassard goes to the Guelph Storm from the London Junior Knights. So a so couple of... Niagara is on the clock here. A couple of players available. Again, honorable mentions as well um, that, uh, that are still available. Cole Emerton of the Vaughn Kings. Weston Cameron of the Toronto Marlboros. Um, we've also got some honorable mentions. Uh, Brady Blasig. Uh, as well as Cam Hodgson. If anybody has any questions for Captain Gavin Bryant, you can leave them in the chat. Yeah, let us know. We're just listening in here because Niagara is on the clock and we might be able to hear the, the pick selection here. So bear with us. The Niagara Ice Dogs are on the clock with their first third round pick. Okay. I didn't catch his first name. Matthew Humphreys? There we go. All right. Goaltender. Goalie. There we go. All right. So I, that continues a long tradition of third round goaltenders in Agra Ice Dogs with Byzantine and uh, Stephen Dillon. You know what's funny? I think he plays on Markham with Brady Watson, and I asked him about that at the Combine. <laughs> I asked him about his goaltender partner being, or his teammate being at the at the combine. That's wild. So, yeah, they go with another Markham Majors and a goaltender here. So, I was thinking that they were going to go that road, honestly. Is size? Does it have it listed on the site yet? Six foot two. Hey, that's not bad as a 16-year-old. Yeah, I mean, I really thought that they needed to take a prospect goalie I don't, I didn't here. hate it. I didn't, I don't, I mean, I, like I said, I don't, I don't hate it. Um, I think that just... Further cements that's where are the overagers. Again, I kind of hammers home the, the idea of over, some overage defensemen. Obviously, I think the decor is probably going to be any adjustment fan to be a trade there, probably. But I, I like them taking a goaltender. I honestly do. Like, I, I think that that is a area that they're going to have to address at some point, and I'm glad that they went ahead and did it earlier than waiting another year to go and draft a prospect goalie because if you think about it, if Owen Flores moves on, you're going to have to have somebody back up Charlie Robertson, and you could go out and make a trade like they did for Marcus Vandenberg. But, again, you'd want them to kind of start to marinate a young goaltender here to, to develop one themselves to hopefully turn him into a Niagara Ice Dog in the next couple of years. Maybe he doesn't become the backup right away. Obviously, it's a lot of pressure. But having him as the third goalie, maybe uh, dress a little bit here and there, get a taste maybe of Charlie it. Charlie Burns. Exactly, which we didn't really get a taste of him uh, in game action. But... You'd hope that it's kind of a similar situation where the Ice Dogs take a young goaltender and are able to to really build up with him. So um, I, I like that pick, and if, if Charlie Robertson is the starter, I, I would be you know totally fine with that as he moves forward here. Matthew Humphreys from the Markham Majors, a teammate of Brady Waslin, who was the fourth overall pick for the Niagara Ice Dogs, goes here again to Niagara with their first third-round pick. They will pick again here coming up shortly. Pick number 56 in the third round. Thank you to those still watching us here on the live stream. Captain Gavin Bryan is going to join us here very shortly, and we're going to have more coverage for you guys going forward starting tomorrow, 9 a.m., bright and early. But tomorrow is going to be filled with a lot of guest appearances. Players are going to join us, some media as well. Some of the management uh, are going to join us as well. So uh, an action-packed uh, weekend here on the Dog Pound podcast uh, for everybody here. While we have a minute before Gavin Bryant joins us, I want to give a quick shout-out to our partners who, without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing tonight and all throughout the year. Big shout-out to Wild Bill's Auto Repair, the Niagara Employment Help Center, 
Global Pet Foods Niagara, all four of their Niagara region locations, j and Flooring, the Niagara Denture Clinic, Bet Stamp, and the Niagara Golf Lounge located in the Best Western Care and Craft Hotel. We plug them all year long, but they are uh, part of our family, and uh, without them, uh, this would not all be possible. So thank you to them for helping us all throughout the year, uh, bringing you guys the best coverage that we possibly can of the Ontario Hockey League, and specifically here with the Niagara Ice Dogs. So a big thank you to them uh, as we go heading towards our off season here uh, in the coming months and starting back up in September. So I uh, really want to thank all of them for their support this season. But Captain Gavin Bryant will be coming down here shortly, Cam. And to be honest, with one, one last note, I was just looking up uh, some information on Humphreys. Um, he was a part of the GTHL top prospect selection. Uh, he was one of the goaltenders uh, listed in that. So there's some of the top four, like top 40 players um, in the GTHL top prospects game. He competed in that. So, um, you know, definitely a uh, well established young goaltender. So, uh, again, uh, kind of a fun, fun to watch now. You know, goaltenders get uh, a little bit, you know, their, their development's a little bit longer, a little bit different. So it's kind of, uh, it'll be fun to watch. All right. So we're going to get Captain Gavin Bryant set up here. He's going to join us here on the show. So give us uh, one second here as we connect the Ice Dogs captain. You want to sit across from us? Yeah, wherever no, you want. You guys, wherever. Yeah, it's, it's up to you, man. captain, wherever you want to go. All right, so joining us on the PHPA hotline, I guess, even though he's in person, is the Ice Dogs captain, Gavin Bryant, looking in uh, fine golf form already. Gavin, I know the Masters started today, so uh, how's how's your uh, golf game been so far, the the rounds you were able to get out to, uh, well, it was still good weather out there. Well, first of all, I watched about six hours of the Masters yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Who's your rooting interest? Um, well, obviously Tiger. Yeah. Um, just watching the like watching Scotty has been unbelievable. Deshambo too. I saw that he got approved of those three D clubs today yep. or well, this week, but came out today, so that was pretty cool. But no, I golfed last weekend as well, and uh, nice been all right weather so uh not today obviously or not this weekend i don't think but um no it's been good well my boy jordan spieth had a quad bogey on 15 <laughs> today so i don't think he's making the cut going forward i think you might be able to take him a run for his money there gavin but uh you know just uh your first i guess taste of the draft room as the captain and just kind of being here watching this whole day can you reflect back to your draft year with owen sound and how kind of nerve-wracking that was for you and, and when that that call did come uh, how how cool of a moment that was for you and the family of everybody getting to kind of soak in the moment. When this weekend comes, do you kind of reflect on your day? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, coming in today and just seeing the setup and everything brought me back to it for sure. It was uh, it was a pretty special day for sure. Obviously for uh, my family and whatnot, but yeah, having uh, seen the setup today and um, no, it was uh, it was an honor. Uh, Darren and uh, Wes let me uh, let me announce that pick. Uh, for uh, Brady there, and um, no, I uh, haven't heard haven't heard nothing but good things about this uh, this kid. Looking forward to meet him hopefully tomorrow. But um, no, for sure, it's a big day, big day for the future of the Ice Dogs. Obviously, big weekend, and um, no, hear nothing but good things about the pick so far. So it's uh, just uh, just cool to be a part of it. So what's the off season like for you, you and the team, and the rest of the players that that'll be back next year? What what's uh, how when does it really kick in? Um, in terms of like off season and things like that, what what are you working on, and and what's the, an off season like for for a player? Yeah, I think the um, the biggest thing for sure, I, uh, especially after uh, an OHL season. I mean, uh, guys 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 need their rest. Mm -hmm. So whether it's uh, sitting on the couch watching the Masters like I've been <laughs> doing, but um, no, I mean, I just uh, for for my case, I just got back in the gym this week, so I took around. Uh, Two weeks off there, and then uh, just kind of starting off light. I don't know how how long uh, guys take off the ice, but it's good to just reset, kind of get your mind off the game. Your mind's on hockey for uh, majority of the year, so um, no, it's a good. It, I think it's a pretty healthy thing to get home, get some rest, see the family, see your friends, and everything, and then really hit it in the off season. Uh, for me, obviously, it's the uh, it's the nonstop skating, every day working out as well. But um, no, it's a pretty. I got a pretty. I got a pretty good in my hometown uh, with my gym. I've been working out with the same guy for around seven years now, oh. so it's uh, it's good for sure. What's something you specifically are gonna work on in the off season? Something that in your game that you know that you think um, that you know has, is something that you want to make a focus of this off season going into next year. We're not talking about his golf game, right? <laughs> not his golf game. <laughs> right. no, 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 no. I think uh, I think health wise, uh, first of all, I got probably the worst shoulders in the. OHL. So getting those, <laughs> okay. maybe getting those strengthened and whatnot, but um, no, I think uh, biggest thing uh, for me the uh, 
the league and the game isn't getting slower. So I think uh, obviously for every kid going home, working on their skating every way they can is uh, a big thing for sure. Um, I think for me personally as well, uh, just conditioning wise, I played a lot, played a lot more, got a lot more ice time this year. Was fortunate enough to get that. So I think uh, getting my conditioning at a uh, at at the peak it's it's been in my uh, career would be good this summer. But um, no other than that, just. Uh, Obviously, putting the muscle on that you need to put on to uh, play in this league, but um, no, other than that, it's uh, it's uh, it's gonna be a pretty pretty big grind of a summer. Now that you've transitioned to an older player, you know it doesn't seem like that long ago, and you're not even that old. I mean, we're in our thirties, so yeah, exactly. I mean, let, let's yeah. relax here. We're in our thirties, <laughs> but uh, you know, as you transition to an older player in junior hockey, I guess I should say, when you look at it and you see like a guy like Maximus Crete and play, people have already made player comparisons to Gavin Bryant. So how does that make you feel that now that you're an older player in the league, people are starting to compare themselves to you and the type of play style that you are? Do you take pride in that, knowing that like people want to become the next Gavin Bryan or play the same play style as you and, and be the same kind of leader that you've kind of turned into be? I don't think it's something that you probably try to do. It's just you being yourself. But uh, when you look back and reflect on it, how cool is that to, to see the next generation coming up and, and wanting to, uh, you know, be like you, I guess, as you were kind of a young player once looking up to some of those other guys. Yeah, for sure. Like you said, I mean, I was, uh, I, I was a young player once in this league. It uh, seems like just yesterday, it seems like it's uh, flown by for sure. But uh, no, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, had three, three years in this league going into my fourth. It's uh it's been great, and uh, yeah, you know what? I can't speak enough about the uh, the ice dogs in the future. The ice dogs. It makes me want to be a uh, an 06 or an 07 as an ice dog right now because I feel like there's a lot of good years to come for sure. But um, no, it's just uh, it, it's it's exciting times for sure. I've said it. I said it towards the end of the year as well. It's been uh, it was a tough year, but I mean, uh, exciting times to come. And uh, like I said, it's just. Uh, Fans kind of get a taste of that this weekend, seeing the new crop, and um, no, like uh, like you said, it's been um, it seems like it's been a pretty good night so far uh, from an Ice Dogs fan perspective, and uh, no, I feel like um, I feel like saying I wish uh, I wish camp was tomorrow, but uh, obviously you don't want to wish the summer away, but um, no, it's uh, pretty exciting times for sure. What uh, do you think? What do you think? Waslin has to. What's your advice to him, and, and what's he going to go through in his first camp and, and season? Like, what's it like? As, uh, as as a player coming to the OHL, what's something that you think that uh, you've got to help them with, or or really any of any of your teammates have to help them with coming into the league? Yeah, um, no, you hammered. I mean, uh, there's going to be a lot of guys, a lot of guys helping these uh, younger guys, a lot of leaders in that room. But um, no, you know what? I think the biggest thing uh, for me coming in my rookie year was the uh, the speed of the game. That first, even the first preseason game, I stepped on the ice. It was definitely an eye opener for me. But um, no, just. Uh, Kind of, kind of adapting to the speed, but also adapting to just the longevity of the year as well. I mean, it's a, it's a long year, sixty-eight games. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's a grind for sure. I mean, uh, it's a tough, tough league to play in. Uh, whether you go by the speed wise, the strength of the guys in this league, it's just, it's an eye opener for sure. So just staying, staying with these younger guys and uh, just uh, keep, keeping them, keeping them engaged, keeping them positive, positively minded. Coming to the rink every day is going to be the biggest thing, especially early on. I was. Thinking about it, and you know, you led the team in points this year it, quietly because everybody yeah, really talks like, about yeah, Kevin quiet, He and Ryan yeah. Robrick, and I know you, you should hate, give it to him. He hates talking about <laughs> yeah, himself, yeah, yeah. so I hate asking him questions about himself. So I'm going to kind of turn it around. You're going to be an overager this year. You're OA that just passed Connor Federico. Can you just talk about what he brought to the room this year as an older guy? Playing a role, it wasn't like he was a top end point producer as an overage player. He really played his role in all aspects. And how much did he mean to you guys in that room? And I know you guys wanted to send him off with a win, but I think that whole ceremony and looking back on it, his final game, what you guys were able to to kind of do for him, and and making him feel special being in his hometown in St. Catharines. Just how much did he meant to this team, and how much do you think of a lasting impact his kind of on ice and off ice leadership is going to bring to this team as you guys move forward? You uh, you need a Connor Federico on uh, on your team if you want to win. I mean, just uh, what he what he'd bring on a uh, not even a nightly basis, just a daily basis, coming to the rink and shooting shooting the jokes that Feds would, just keeping the room loose and whatnot. But you get to you you get to the game and towards I, I mean I want to say in January he started to rack up late twenty like twenty eight minutes a night into the thirty minute mark. It's just. It's a tough ask for a for a defenseman in the uh, Ontario Hockey League, but um, you know what? Feds tackled it really well, and I mean, uh, just his presence on the ice. There, I don't think uh, 
I don't think there was a lot of guys that were too excited to get on the ice when he was uh, on the other end. <laughs> so, um, no, just a uh, lasting effect in my life for sure. Uh, he um, taught taught me a lot, and uh, I think I think we were, we fed off each other a lot. It was uh, it was good in the room to have him, but um, no, I wish uh, nothing but praise for him. And uh, obviously not the send off we wanted, but just having his family in there and his friends and everything, the whole the whole damn section they were they were right there. So it was. Uh, uh, it, it being a loss it was a pretty cool send off for him having his family and friends there and uh no that was nothing but deserving for him how big is it or, or is it as impactful uh, as it might seem with Kevin going into the NHL draft this year and, and hopefully it, it appears that you know get selected um how big is that to you know obviously the, the Ice Hogs have gone through a, a pretty pretty big rebuild here um but getting our first drafted player how big is that for the room? Does it add like a level of confidence for your teammates? You know, even though it's not yourself or or, or, or the other players, but is it add some uh, legitimacy? Is not the right word, but you know, uh, kind of a, a confidence um, for the rest of you guys. Um, you know what? I think for the rest of us, it just uh, it, it it's more it's more happiness for us. I mean, mm-hmm. Kevin's a guy that comes in every day and puts in the work that. Uh, needs to be put in, and uh, he shows it on the ice as well. He leads by example on the ice. But I think the biggest confidence will uh, will, will come for Kevin himself. I mean, him uh, him just uh, experiencing uh, what he's going to experience here in the next month with the combine and then the next two months leading up to the draft and then obviously going to the draft. I mean, it's going to be it's gonna be pretty cool for him. And, I mean, like you said, having having a guy that's drafted in the NHL in the room obviously is huge, and it's uh, it brings attention for sure. But, no, I think the uh, – the biggest thing from at least my end, and it will be from the rest of the guys' end, is uh, just the happiness and the the congratulations to him. But I think for Kevin, uh, being in that position where uh, he's going to get drafted, he's going to go to uh, multiple camps from now until the uh, start of the season, it's just going to make him that much better. And, uh, no, just really, really looking forward to see what uh, he's going to bring next year. What do you think the year is? You know, obviously it's such a short window. It's, it's very unique. You know, you guys have four, you know, sometimes only three years in terms of uh, a career in, in, in the OHL, but uh, what year do you think is um, you see the biggest jump in players, whether it be their ability offensively, not even just you know comfortability in the league? Where do you usually tend to see uh, it, things really settle in, yourself included? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, uh, for me personally, I think I had a uh, having the career highs I did this year, which was my uh, second after my second year going into my third year. I think you kind of, for me personally, I made that jump, but I mean, I missed out on a rookie year also. So I think maybe that uh, that sort of eye opener, if um, in your first year of uh, draft eligibility, if you're fortunate for sure, you take the the, the steps needed when you uh, you get drafted. Obviously, you go to those camps, and then you take the steps needed that's guided from that uh, certain team. But even if you don't get picked, which was my scenario, I kind of took it on the chin and kind of tried to run with it. Last year I was unfortunate because, again, shoulders worse than the OHL reminded. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, um, it's just one of those things that where, where in my case I just kind of – the frustration of uh, – it wasn't even frustration, but not getting picked. And then uh, the frustration of, with my shoulders, it just kind of – fueled me going into a new team this year. So I, th- I feel like you kind of hit those second and third years where you kind of hit your stride. And I think confidence is the biggest thing as well. You get that first year out of the way, and then if you gain confidence that first year, going into that second year, you're really excited as well. So In your second season, or a player's second season, again, yourself included, where does where do you see the, the biggest confidence jump, whether it be offensively or physically? Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Like, I, I, you know, we had four 16-year-olds in the lineup. Um Physically, you know, early on, you kind of see players maybe not um, get, not get pushed around a little. Yeah, bit. get pushed around. Yeah. I mean, I think back to Zada in the second game; he fought Halton in, uh, <laughs> which was just so stunning because it just happened so quickly. But is it offensively or physically? Like, what is the thing where you see the biggest jump in confidence, or where does confidence impact you the most in terms of most players' games? Yeah, well, you just you gain a grasp on everything. Like I told you, the speed being the biggest one, but I mean, I think all aspects you kind of hit hit that stride in the second year. I mean, offensively for sure, you see a, you see a lot of guys after their first years. Obviously, offensive output go up, but um, I mean, I touching on physicality as well. You just you, it's it's all confidence. I mean, you get that you get the 
confidence of going into corners a little harder than the year before. You get the confidence of shooting the puck a little more than the year before, right? So it 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 all adds up. But I mean, it's just the it's just the experience level. I mean, like you just you gain you're like a sponge in your first year. You gain and gain and gain, and then you kind of put it all together your second and third year, and then you kind of hit that stride from there. So I mean, it it hit it hits all aspects for sure. But um, no, for sure, offensively and physicality, like you said, being the biggest one. And up last. Uh, serious one for me, Gavin. Then I have a, a guest question from somebody you probably know is coming. But um, uh, my last one is: You're obviously trying to earn a pro contract this year, and you see a good friend in yours, Bo Aiky, earn a contract, uh, a, a pro tryout with with the Pittsburgh uh, Scranton Wilkesbury Penguins. And does that kind of fuel you? And and knowing that there are going to be more scouts in the building this year with some of your high end talent, Kevin's going to get drafted, and and Robrick a couple years from now. And having so many young 16-year-olds in the lineup that are draft eligible for next year. Like, how much does that motivate you? I know you put the team first, but knowing that, you know, earning that pro contract and continuing your hockey career is obviously something that you want to do after you're, you finish out playing your overage year here in the Ontario Hockey League. Just how kind of motivated and, and kind of fuel does that give you knowing that it's a, it's a, I guess, a good resume builder and job interview for you this yeah. year as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're never you're never going to shy away from wanting to make the NHL until you uh, hang up the skates. And um, I mean, I'm going into this year uh, open minded. I haven't been to a, haven't been to a camp or anything like that. And uh, no, I'm just trying to uh, show myself and uh, show what I can do. Hopefully, in a uh, full season, had a almost a full season this year. But um, no, I mean, all the tools are going to be there. I think we're going to be like I told you. I think we're going to be a lot better team next year. But um, no, like you said, seeing uh, seeing Bo get the deal that he did, um, and uh, he actually scored the night that I saw. So that was uh, it, it, from a friend's standpoint, training with him every day, just seeing the work that we put in and seeing that it's working off for him right now is uh, pretty cool to see. But no, just heading in uh, next year, open minded, and um, no, just uh, trying trying to build off uh, something that I made this year. So you went through. Uh, you you mentioned you lost your rookie season that due to COVID. Yes. Yep. Yeah. How like. Obviously, knock on wood, nothing like that ever happens again in the <laughs> <Sure>. world. But <laughs> impact that again because the cycle is so short in in junior in in major junior. How much of an impact did that have on not just you, but like that entire like I mean, probably the biggest like um, spotlight would have been Shane Wright. That like that really messed with that you know because he was a, a exceptional status and you know obviously it really jacked up that that whole trajectory. But in terms of like yourself and other rookies, like when you went into your first year after missing a year, did do you think that it was made your first couple of uh, of games or first couple of months of, of playing easier because you were older, or did you feel like you were behind because you'd missed that first year of playing when you were younger? Well, yeah, you know what, I came in, I came in my first year, I will say technically second, but I came in that year knowing that there was a crop of younger guys lower than me. So that gave me a little bit, confidence. A little, a little bit yeah. more confidence, but I mean, it was tough, like for sure. Like the draft, the draft happening. And I think COVID came around that March break is right near March right around yeah. there. And then the draft happening in April and then just the, the what ifs and unknown throughout the summer. And then you get into September, October and you think there's a plan in place, but mm-hmm. Obviously, um, the the virus wasn't uh, wasn't gonna allow that to happen. It was just it was tough for sure. I just, just tried to make the best of it. Had a lot of time with my family. Obviously, everybody everyone everybody, did. Ho- everybody yeah, everyone hopefully did, did for yeah. sure. But um, no, it was uh, the the funny part was getting creative with the at home workouts. For sure. <laughs> yeah, getting, getting creative with that stuff. I mean, trying to. Obviously, trying to stay in shape in case there is a you season. You rollerblade coming, a lot, right? like yeah, what was yeah, yeah Mar- was it? Uh, that Mars blades. Uh, those Mars blades were one of my first purchases actually, and in April, so I was blading around with those, and then I, I can remember the one of the funnier ones I had was just putting two chairs together and a hockey stick and kind of doing seated chin ups with those. So, <laughs> like that was that was one of the more funnier moments that uh, oh that we goodness. had at home. But like I mean, prison workouts. I know, yeah. yeah, that was the thing, right? But just getting creative, like you said. I mean, it was tough for everybody, but um, looking it, it, when it happened, it was like I'm just trying to. Get it, get back and get back and ready to go as fast as I can. I mean, trying to get my first year, and now looking back at it, it kind of sucks not having that. Yeah, you get that first extra year, year right? I know, yeah. which sucks. But I mean, again, just trying to make the best of it, right? But no, no, for sure. Niagara's picking in six picks. We're here with uh, Ice Dogs captain Gavin Bryant. Last one for you, Gavin. We appreciate you taking the time Thank today you. out of the draft room. But this is from uh, Colin Ward from the OHL and Sixty podcast. He's it's a two part question. He goes, ask him if he knows a guy who can make their own draft clothes. I think he's referring to your father. <laughs> and then he says, and what is it like in the year four since he's been drafted and what he'd tell himself 
what he'd tell rookie Gavin Bryant as overage Gavin Bryant? Well, the first question, yep, a little funny story behind that one. Um, my dad, I had a white T-shirt, printed out a big attack logo, put Bryant on the back, and I <laughs> posed for a picture of it. I guess got on the attack Instagram and whatnot, but he was creative about that one. Again, that was the creativity coming out of COVID, right? But, um, no, I think um, – yeah, the second one, I guess the biggest thing being just uh, soaking it in, enjoying it all. I mean, um, it's uh, it seems like just yesterday I was getting getting picked to own sound, and it seems like just this morning that I'm going to camp for uh, Niagara this year. I mean, this year flew by as well, but I think just the biggest thing would just be soaking it in, and um, it's been it's been a fun ride. It's been a crazy ride these three years, and I'm hoping uh, hoping it ends with a blast this year for sure. But um, no, it's uh, enjoying it, soaking it in, and uh, no, I'm definitely going to be soaking in this year as well. So, Ice Dogs captain Gavin Bryant joins us on our OHL live stream. Gavin, thanks so much for taking the time and doing the captain segments all year long. Gavin's Leadership Lounge, it was uh, fun having you there, and I know the Golf Lounge wants to get you out next year uh, to, to hit some <laughs> balls out there. Uh, I know you're a big golf guy, so maybe uh, going into next year we'll get you out there. But we appreciate you taking the time all year, uh, post games, and with all the other uh, special stuff that we did with you uh, throughout the year. And look forward to having you back and and go uh, go shoot some uh, some rounds under par this summer. Awesome, thank you guys. I appreciate everything. Thanks again, man. There was Ice Dogs captain Gavin Bryant on the OHL draft live stream for the Niagara Ice Dogs. There, Cam, a lot of good stuff from the Ice Dogs captain. Um, probably gonna clip that into a nice little episode. Yeah, great. After. It's uh, it's great to learn about. Again, I, I, you know, you, you know, COVID feels like it's forever ago now. Um, but uh, you know, five years ago, and uh, you know, you, you think about all the guys in their draft year that lost their draft year. But you know, I think about the guys that were rookies. And I mean, Pano, like that's a kind of a famous one too. Just at home, he was a projected first round pick in the NHL. Um, going into his draft year. And COVID happens, it loses the season, and then obviously, you know, I, I believe he's got a, you know, a couple of pro tryouts and whatnot. But uh, he's in his overage. Is he an overager this year? Who? Uh, Pano. Pano Femus will be an overager this coming year. Yeah. So, um, you know, it just, it, you know, it, you talk to a player that 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 lost that year, and again, I think it's a lot of people forget that um, all of the all of their attention goes to NHL players or guys that get drafted in the NHL, so their career continues. But for ninety nine percent of of OHL players, they have these four years, these four or five years. If you're lucky, if you're an overager, if you get to play an extra year, and that doesn't mean you're a bad hockey player. No. If you don't get drafted. No, you know, those guys go on to to it's make the, pro hockey, not maybe in the NHL, but in the ECHL, East Coast Hockey this League. This is the biggest feeder league to the National Hockey League in the world. Or even they go and play U Sports or NCAA. You know, the, the, their hockey careers don't end if they don't get drafted into the NHL. No, no, but you have, but but a lot of people think that like you know you play in the OHL, then you're oh you're going to keep playing. Uh, towards a pro level, but that's not what happened. So a lot of these players, I, I was, I wanted to ask him, but I, you know, <laughs> thought thought better of it because you know he just talked about you know kind of you know it sucks to lose a year, but uh, what it would like for him to watch Federko, you know his that last game for him, right? Because yeah, I think you got one season left, right? And uh, that's that's the tough part. And he's going to go as captain, um, so. I uh, really hope that uh, he has another great season. There's just so many guys on this team that we've followed now for a couple of years now that just deserve a playoff run. You know, uh, I, I talked about Flores quite a bit. Flores is the one that comes to mind. Actually, to be honest, it's Kevin. But, um, yeah, like, I just think that uh, I just think that, that would be, um, you know, just a huge a huge thing here is uh, reporting here, uh, the scout.ca, uh, biggest steals from the second round of the OHL draft. Maximus created the OHL Ice Dogs at number 30. Love that. We've had, that's like three people now that, that are in the industry that have said, you know, that um, we got a we got a, a great one. And I mean, hey, all it's got to do is follow up last year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> absolutely. And that was a lot of you know meat and potatoes. Like if, if I, I I wanted to ask him who he expects to have the biggest jump, but I think that's probably not fair because you'd say everyone. We'll ask him that in training camp. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe as we get a little bit further. But Zada is someone. You look at a lot of like even career. If if you look at Gavin Bryant's career profile, like there's a massive jump in in, in offensive stats and, and and that offensive um, output that doesn't happen in your rookie season that ends up happening, um, you know, in that second and third year. And Zada's pretty big. He's got the draft pedigree. Um, he's going to not. He's uh, sheltered isn't the right word, but he is going to not be playing first line minutes. Right? Maybe. Potentially, you know, but uh, more than likely not. So he's not playing up against the number one line of the, of the other team. 
um, he's got an op, op, uh, you know, in the, the ability to, um, to to really take a jump here, and that would be massive if he turned into a forty point player. You know, what, what's your expectation for for Kevin next year? For Kevin, Oof. I mean, he just scored thirty, so you'd hope. No, no, no. So I mean, do you think we get our first point per game player? Yes, I think that's a. I would I would put that at a minus one fifty or minus two hundred that we get. Does rubric? Become a point no, I, I don't know if that's a lot. That's that's a lot to put on a seventeen-year-old. But I mean, if there's anybody that could break all the seventeen-year-old records, it'd do be you, Brian okay, let me Robert. ask you this? Do you ask you this because he definitely was more focused on goal scoring and his shot. He, had, he I led, think he's an underrated playmaker. He, too. Yes, he led his led led rookies in shooting by just a large margin. I wonder yep. how at the end of the year if that was just kind of creeping a lot like Matthews in the 70 goals. So if he's just firing stuff, I almost wonder if that was coaching. Just they told him to fire the puck yeah, constantly, and then maybe. You know, work on the the playmaking and the faceoffs and that I stuff wonder will come for him. If he doesn't score as many goals next year, I, I we looked, we Akeel looked. Akil Thomas's goal went, went down, down, but his point points total went, went skyrocketed. Up. Yeah, because I, I think he had it like forty nine assists or something. I could see year. a situation where Kevin becomes a forty goal scorer and, and Ryan, Ryan goes like a seventy point player or something. You know, point per game player that, but he's got you know forty the fifty assists. assists. That yeah, year, that's yeah. that's kind of what. That's kind of where my expectation would be. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Niagara's up in four picks, so we've had a, a, a slew of picks there while we had the captain, Gavin Bryan, on. Matthew Humphreys went to the Niagara Ice Dogs. Then we had Chase Chase gone. There's Cameron Weston, so he was the end. Cole Emerton back-to-back. Those were the other two players that were projected first-round picks uh, that went taken just before the Ice Dogs. Brady Blasig <coughs> was another guy from the OHL Combine. Um, that impressed there as well. Ethan Kindry also went to the Owen Sound attack. And yeah, you mentioned Weston Cameron and, and Cole Emerton. Those were two guys that were still projected on that first round mock draft that uh, that we found from the scouts that uh, do cover the league. So the Ice Dogs will pick again in four picks. Brantford is up, then Sudbury, London, and then Niagara will end off their draft. Actually, yeah, they'll end off the draft for tonight as we roll into day two tomorrow. So I think we're, unless we have some special guests coming on after the Ice Dogs pick, um, that'll probably be it for our night one coverage, but we'll have to wait and see how this thing kind of progresses the next four picks. But the Ice Dogs so far have taken two forwards and a goaltender. So yeah, you'd exactly. almost be wondering if a D-man would Yeah, be I feel like, yeah. That would be, I mean, they took Frolov last year in the second round. He became an impact player right away, but the Ice Dogs have had some solid third-round picks that have gone on to do some good things with the organization, maybe not right away, but down the road. It's definitely still a impactful round. You look at uh, Callum Chanowski, was a third-round pick of the Brantford Bulldogs, so he's a guy you look at that who's a third-round pick, and he's a top-four defenseman right now for Niagara. Yeah, exactly. I think that... that, that Again, getting some more more draft picks. I'm super curious to see. We we didn't move out all the overagers we had. Now that also it played in with injury because um, Pottley was out for the majority of the second half of that season. Um, you know, so you're obviously not going to move him. But there's some overagers. Owen Flores, I think, definitely became. I think we all just assumed he's that, an X factor, really. Yeah, if he comes back or not. If he comes back, I personally would love that because I think that. He's probably going to get invited to another NHL camp. He went to Nashville last year. And I yep. believe Pittsburgh the year before. That was their development camp. Yeah. And so, then he, but he went to Nashville's main camp. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if an ECHL team came calling for Owen. Yeah, Flores. that wouldn't. Yeah, his compete level is off the charts. Like I don't know how many times he almost fought players on <laughs> skating up. Yeah, he does not like losing. And uh, there were so many times this season where he really kept them in it. And I think that it would just be a shame to not see him in the playoffs. Did we see Tucker Tynan in the playoffs? Because he was a backup, yeah. No. We got the win, yeah. Yeah, no. I the, mean, the, it would be... That was the last time the Ice Dogs made the playoffs was 2018. Who was the goaltender? Was that Dylan? No. I can't even remember. That yeah, was so like, long, long ago. ago. Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I remember they started the year after with Christian Sprawlia as the projected number one goal. Sprawlia, I remember. And, yes, you're right. Yeah. You're right, you're right. You're we right. got another pick here. Nick Rosetto for the Brantford Bulldogs right winger from... The Pittsburgh Penguins Elite 15s, that's the second player to go from that program. Yep. So another Pittsburgh Penguins Elite 15s, Nick Rosetto, a five, he's only five foot seven, but you know what, if he goes to Brantford and develops under Jay McKee, he could be another impact winger for them. 
I'm surprised that they didn't take someone like uh, Maximus Creed, just given the play style. <laughs> Ice Dogs are up in three picks, so I might as well just go ahead and put the on-the-clock graphic up for you guys watching on the YouTube Live. Thank you to those still th listening through the almost three hours worth of coverage for us here tonight for day one. We'll be back bright and early tomorrow, 9 a.m. Uh, beginning. And, and again, we're not, it's going to be more interviews tomorrow than, than anything, but we'll still, we're obviously going to get to talk to Brady Waslin and some of the other prospects as they, they float in here uh, to the Meridian Center tomorrow for day two. So uh, stay tuned for that. We will react to some of the Ice Dogs picks um, throughout uh, the day two as well. But for the most part, uh, our mock draft is uh, pretty much over at this point from the guys of the uh, the analysis that we had. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's still some honorable mentions that uh, that were put together. But yeah, that uh, it'll be interesting to see who they who they select now. Um, this is uh, you know we're getting into the last kind of impactful that. I mean, again, I would love to see the statistics on that, like how many players outside of the top three rounds didn't or played in their rookie season. You know, we had a few last year. I mean, Galianov. Um, but I would love to see that that like number like league wide, um, to see where uh, where the, the players kind of you know, it stops going to next year. But I just look at this list of draftees over the years: Graham Knott, Chris Paquette, Vince Dunn, I Brendan Perlini. The, the like in the time frame, like from <laughs> like even even if you go to twenty or, or twenty seventeen with Maximov and Jones, in like the four year span, Vince Dunn, Perlini, Verhage, Blake Siebeneller. <laughs> I can't believe Steven Miller was drafted. I so was Brett Moran by the Brett Dallas Moran Stars. was the goalie. The guy was wondering how long was he? He was a feisty goalie, Brett Moran. But, I mean, look at Dallas. They take a couple of, I mean, Jason Robertson now, but he, I think he was drafted as a Kingston Frontenac, but he still count was, him. Uh, Jamie Alexiak was also drafted by the Dallas Stars, I believe. So We should ice. do a trade tree. <laughs> Those are always the best to see, like, because I bet they're still going on. In the OHL, a trade tree's got to be insane because there's so many draft picks and they're always traded before they leave the league. Henry Doucette goes at 54 to the Sudbury Wolves. He was at the combine as well. It's just interesting for me to to see the GMs that were there and that them taking players from the combine. Sudbury GM spoke to him, Rob Papineau. He was in attendance, so not shocked that they go ahead and take somebody that they got another look at there at the combine. Yeah, and again, I think that just goes like it's meeting them in person, like meeting their personality, like that definitely goes a long way. Cause that leaves a lasting mark. Max got, Muse. Here we go. Is he related to um, Ottawa oh, 67's uh, Henry? Henry Muse? I don't know. That's a from pretty Ottawa, name. Ontario. They're both from Ottawa, so I, I that might be a sibling of Henry Muse. Five ten at sixteen years old. Muse is pretty tall. From this Ottawa Myers Automotive team has had a lot of players yeah. in the last couple of rounds here. Yeah. But yeah, Max Muse goes to London. Niagara is on the clock, so we'll wait and see where their pick's going to be. Who do you think the first OHL player in the NHL draft is this year? The first OHL player? Mm -hmm. That's tough. It's, yeah, I, like, first of all, very defensive heavy. Like, I, but I, I'm curious. Liam about, Greentree? It, no, oh, I'm Sam thinking, Dickinson. Si nah, but Z Zane. Uh, Zane Parekh? Parekh, like. He is. Yeah, I think, he's I think a Dickinson's wild gotta card. go top ten or top five. I think Dickinson has a shot top five. Yeah, yeah but, but we, Zane Parekh has been projected Dickinson. like. Yeah, we don't, yeah exactly. <laughs> what could have been? Um, but uh, yeah, we. we uh, I mean, to be honest, like I don't think we get rubric if we have Sam. No, like we probably win. Like you know, I mean, he probably impacts the team enough to win more than what we did. So you don't you one one position change in the lottery, and we don't get second overall. Yeah, and Matt Schaefer might not end up falling. You I, wonder, I wonder if they'd ever... No, they would never answer that. No. <laughs> As you say, what would happen if they go first? The Ice Dogs are on the clock here, so we're just waiting for their final pick of night one here in round three with the 56th overall selection that they got from the Brantford Bulldogs. Bear with us here. I believe we're about to get the selection. He is another player I talked to at the combine. <laughs> Did you talk to everyone? No, I talked to five guys, and they've taken two of them. Really? Nick Frasca and well, Brady Waslin. What was he like? 
Nick Frasca, well, he's from the lineage of the Frasca brothers here in the Ontario Hockey League. So he's the, I believe he's the fourth of the five brothers. That have played in the that have played in the OHL, and there's still another younger brother that is uh, projected to come in the league as well. So he's the fourth of five. Will all five play? <laughs> Can you imagine? That's crazy. So Nick Frasca talked about his brothers preparing him for this moment. Defenseman for the Toronto Marlboros. Defenseman. Yep. All right, there we go. That makes it. They've hit on all heads. Like to be honest, like again, we know very like in terms of like what we tape and things like that. They're just it, that's not widely available, um, but. You know, we get uh, for widely from people in the industry. Maximus Creed seems to be one of the better selections around two. Brady Wasslin was projected as high as two. Uh, we get him at four. And uh, we get our goaltender prospect, the second goaltender taken in the draft. And yep. uh, now we've got our defenseman um, that can uh, – I think that what's big for any defensive prospects is trying to put them in a position where they play third-line minutes. I think that is something that a luxury that we did not have last year with Frolov – um, was that he kind of, even in Padrekar, his first year in the OHL, correct? I believe he was, this was his first year in the OHL. Sorry, who? Uh, Padrekar. Yes. So his first year in North America. Yeah. So, I mean, like, they had to play tough four minutes, you know, and I think, you know, getting a, a drafted player now, if he's going to play next year, having them be able to develop in the third pair and not have to play the, the crazy amount of minutes, like, that just goes a long way. It trickles down the rest of the lineup. So, um, a great first day. All intents and purposes, super exciting time, um, and and hopefully another just absolute banger draft class that we had just like last year. Yeah, so the Ice Dogs add two forwards, a goaltender, and a defenseman with their first four picks on day one here at the OHL draft. Uh, we're going to be back with you tomorrow for more coverage, but before we wrap up here, Cam, I mean, you think about that and, and, and adding those players to the organizational depth and you mentioned last year's draft class really kind of setting the tone now. I don't know if you can expect that every single year. No, that that's four 16-year-olds come in the lineup like they did. And again, they had the extra first there uh, from the compensatory pick, which I, they obviously don't have this year. So you add in a first, a second, and two thirds. Even if those guys don't make the team, you know that they're going to be the first guys most likely to be called up or the extra players that can get in the lineup and that Ben Boudreaux and his coaching staff can mold into the players that they want to be Niagara Ice Dogs here and having that depth from top to bottom here forward D goaltender they address all three of the positions here in night one I think that was big quick expectations I mean again without seeing them in training camp and whatnot I would, I would more than likely um it, it's that you'd see Waslin and Crete probably in the lineup on on opening night or at least with the team um I would have to assume that Humphreys probably doesn't see game action you know uh, again I think that they have the luxury of being slower uh, with it, it, it all depends on Flores. Flores, yes, exactly. Flores, and then um, with our defenseman, uh, you know, again, I think our decor is in a pretty decent spot, and it depends. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll see some overagers or the acquisition of, of of one that would be used on defense, but we'll have to wait and see because you know we, Gavin Bryant's not going anywhere, and if Flores stays, we got one left. We do. So I don't know if you want to try to take another quick break to try to see if we can get another guest on or. You want to just wait till tomorrow? Uh, what time are we starting tomorrow? Nine o'clock. That's uh, gonna be a long day. <laughs> Probably just want to save it for tomorrow. Yeah, I, I appreciate everybody tuning. We're almost at the the, the three hour mark, so that that works out perfectly. So, uh, Cam, final thoughts I'll give to you uh, as we wrap up day one of the draft for the Ice Dogs and getting some exciting players. We kind of just talked about the organizational depth and that, but um, just. The draft experience as a whole so far, Captain Gavin Bryant joined us. We're going to have more more guests tomorrow. But, uh, you know, this is almost like Christmas morning for a team that's in the state like the Ice Dogs having a high pick. And you don't, want them, to, you, you don't want them to be here every single year. And you hope this is the last year that they're picking high for a, for a very long time and being in the lottery for the third straight year. I hope that we're here next year talking about maybe a, a mid-round pick in the first round, possibly, and not having all these types of guys having to come in uh, with these high picks. But, uh, you know, what, what were your thoughts here? Uh, first of all, it's just I, I think that the the up led, like, Gavin is a perfect representation of it, but uh, just the organization so upbeat. You know, it, it's not, uh, you know, obviously things are going, um, haven't, haven't been going great, but last year in terms of the draft and development went fantastic, in my opinion. And uh, that comes as a fan and not just someone covering the team as well, but... Um, I think that we had losing the low draft lottery 
obviously everyone just assumes that's going to be bad news, but we got some fantastic players, especially uh, in, in the first three rounds. So excited to see how the rest of the draft goes. And uh, um, I'm pumped for another season. I'd definitely leaving today more excited and more um, hopeful about next year than I was going into it. The team got better tonight mm -hmm. already as we go into the off season and trades and that still to come. Day two of the draft tomorrow. Join us 9 a.m. We'll have the live stream just like we did tonight on YouTube Live. We're going to have a lot of guests tomorrow to help fill the time for what should be in another exciting day here at the Meridian Center for the Niagara Ice Dogs. So for Cam Halbert, my name is Brandon Caputo. We are going to sign off here from the Meridian Center at the 2024 OHL Priority Selection Draft. The Ice Dogs add four players tonight to their roster and rounds 4 to 15 tomorrow. The Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of the year Niagara Ice Dogs, is proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family in all four of their great Niagara region locations. Thank you to all, all those today who tuned in for the almost three hours worth of draft coverage here for night one. We'll see you here back tomorrow, bright and early, 9 a.m. for day two for more of our draft coverage here on the Dog Pound Podcast. So we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning. Have a great night. And this has been another episode right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network.